What is up, boys and girls? On this episode of the podcast, I have Pat and Posh of the Founder Hour podcast, which I was lucky enough to be on their podcast. I think it was in 2016. I don't know. But these dudes are super inspiring. They have one of the coolest podcasts out there for business stuff. They interview entrepreneurs in the Los Angeles area, and they have a bunch of cool big hitters up in there. And on this show, we just talked about a whole bunch of stuff. So without any further ado, please welcome Pat and Posh of the Founder Hour Podcast. Welcome to the Nick Ingersoll Show. We are here. First time having two guests on the show at one time. Have you had have you had podcasters on the show before? I have not had another podcaster on the show actually. Boom. A lot of firsts, a <laughs> lot of firsts today. A lot of firsts. Thank you for the opportunity. How long ago was it that I was on your podcast? Is that 2 years it's Almost already? 2 years now. Yeah. Good god, time ne- goes by. Next month uh, it'll be our 2 year. So you yeah. were like I think the first four or five guests. Or something Sixth like guest. Sixth episode guest. six. So if you go on our website, www.thefounderhour.com, just search Nick Ingersoll. It's one of the earlier ones. And listen to that episode. It's one of the best ones still, by the way. We always That's say, awesome. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I, it's, it's standing the test of time, that conversation. I, that. I think there was one uh, a good friend of ours. Her name is Silva. And uh, she hit, I, think, I don't know if she hit you up. I think she said she did. Um, so Silva, if you didn't hit him up, then we just, you just got called out. But she was like super inspired by your story, like how you kind of came from not much and were able to build yourself up and help build a company. Uh, and so she was very, very like you know, just she was talking all the time about it, and you know, became a bigger fan as time went on. So you obviously impacted at least one person. That's awesome. well, I'm sure you impacted more, but if I've, if I've impacted one person positively, then that's a win in life, yeah. I think. Yeah. 100%. That's yeah. awesome. And you two, you know, it's two years ago, and this is obviously way before I had a podcast. This podcast is still relatively new. Mm-hmm. But you guys, you know, when I sat down with you both, you just like were new to the podcast. I was the number I was the sixth episode, mm-hmm. and then but somehow you both just sort of knew how to conduct a fantastic interview and, and yeah. play off each other and have this conversational style. Like, how did that all come about? Was that preconceived or was that just sort of the natural yeah. evolution of it's what It's pretty happened? crazy. It's like one of those things where until you just throw yourself in the pit and just like figure it out, like you don't really know what you're and, and like look I, I don't even think like we're that good like we obviously every single time we try to improve. I think we're fucking fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, but um no, it's like neither of us were like journalism majors. Neither of us um, had any experience like doing any type of interviewing. I kind of did. You did? I mean, I mean, you went to law school, so, yeah, you, so you're a good talker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just talked I a lot. definitely did it. Um, yeah, Pat doesn't talk I'll, I'll as much. I'll speak for myself here. Yeah, yeah. And Pat doesn't talk as much. Posh can jump Pat's in a good here. listener and good like responder to the conversation. I just talk a lot, so eventually, like, if you just like you so, throw so many darts, one of them's gonna hit. So, <laughs> out of the hundred things I say, one of them is kind of good. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we used to. I mean, early on, like, we kind of not prepared, but like, we would write down like ballpark, like, you know, questions we wanted to ask and kind of go off of that and riff off of that. Yeah. But at some point, we're like, honestly, the best conversations we have, and I think the best conversations we like to listen to are the ones that are like supernatural and just out of your own curiosity, like, what kind of comes out of that. And so we've been sticking to that since mm-hmm. since then, since like probably you, like your episode, because I don't even think we had like a paper or anything in front of us for your. We were just no. we had our, our mic barely worked. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. We had some severe technical yeah. difficulties yeah. for a second. <laughs> but you, luckily, we've uh, fortunately we moved, moved off yeah. from that microphone. But. but you know, Nick, taking it back to even before like like how this even began, right? Like how the founder hour began and how this podcasting thing began. Like so, Pat and I met in college, and we've been friends uh, for what, eight years now. Yep. So um, I think from the get go, we were both just conversational with one another. Like, you know, we were having conversations about business, about life, philosophy, you know, I mean, just everything, sports, everything and anything. And so, you know, when you kind of have that, you know, natural, um, you know, ability to convert, converse with one another, it translates over into the podcasting world. So when we started this, I mean, from the get go, we already had these conversations with people. Like, you know, with people like yourself, with other friends that were in business or were starting something up. So it was natural to us. And that's why we're like, why don't we just put a microphone in front of us and record it? Because we were already having these things. And, you know, it gave us the ability to also have more conversations once we kind of gave people that platform. But, you know, 
a part of it comes organically, just that conversational aspect. But I think we hear a lot of the time we hear feedback that we've even gotten better uh, at it because I think we know what to ask or what people want to hear. And we almost at one point got bored of the same answers. Everybody was giving us the same stuff. Yeah. So we're like, you know what? Instead of talking about, you know, what your business looks like, we really want to kind of go into the mindset of why you're doing this stuff, how it started, where you came from, where you think it's going, where this industry is going. And really ever since we had that kind of realization, because earlier on we kind of felt some of the guests, not you, but some of the guests like it was kind of an advertisement for their business and we're like we don't want to be that like we want to we want to talk about things that they've never talked about before you know and like that really starts with them as a human being and people are always asking them like about their business and we're like you can find that shit on google right, right. like we're just going to talk about them and ever since we've done that we've just seen like the feedback from the guests like after the podcast is done they'll be like holy shit like i was not expecting that like yeah. that was a great podcast it was a great you know conversation and so that that's when we figured out like oh we're on to something here like let's just stick to that and since then you know it's been really good like every conversation we've had we walk away we walk away super inspired so we hope that whoever's listening to feels that way that's awesome you know yeah. i feel like it's um it's actually really good on youtube because it, it's actually better for the founders that go on the show to have that more conversational, open dialogue and style than sort of that cookie cutter, oh, you know, I'm just going to sit here and say the same shit everybody else says type of thing. Um, and mm-hmm. so really, you're, you're helping them out in sort of a tremendous way. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think one of the biggest, not challenges, but I think something we've run into when we're trying to get some of these folks to be guests on the podcast is their PR people will hit us up and be like, hey, can you mm-hmm. send us a list of questions? And I was like, I'd love to. We just don't have any, you know. Like, we don't have questions, so I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I, we're going to come unprepared, you know. But it's, I guarantee you, it's going to make for a better conversation because the more prepped that guest is, they're and if they forget what they were prepping, they're going to just lose themselves. So who knows themselves better than themselves? So if we ask you questions about you, you're in the best position to answer it. And if you don't know the answer, then that's on you. And we want like mm-hmm. a raw like answer, like something yeah. that you just thought of, not no. something that you had to think like hours and hours about. Like, <laughs> yeah. what should right. about yeah. taglines yeah. to your and, questions. And, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And as a founder, that's like a very important skill is to th- be able to think on the spot, be able to make decisions pretty quickly, uh, be able to communicate. So those are things that as a founder, like as a good founder, you're already doing those things. So it makes the conversation much more smooth too. I mean, if you, Pat and I had to have prepared questions and something threw us off, or you know, we should have had a follow up to something to an answer, we would get thrown off. Right. So it just wasn't something we were comfortable doing, and we we haven't done it. That's interesting. So not having a script is actually the more prescriptive route to go in a lot 100%, of ways. But you you kind of have to be like have that curiosity within you though. Like sure. you have to really want to. I mean, I used to work in sales, so um, active listening is a very, very big skill that they teach you, which is like really like listen and understand like what's what someone's saying, like why are they saying it? Because in sales, you know, if, if you're not listening, then you're not you might lo- like not catch something that could have been the breaking point of like, you know, the person actually buying your product versus not. So I think that translates over to like just interviewing because that's kind of what you're doing in sales. It's like you're asking all these questions to really dig to where the pin, pin pain point is. And then you know see how your product can help them out, right? right? So very very similar situation with with interviewing and podcasting. And I think that's why podcasts like have grown so much is because of those like raw conversations and not the scripted stuff. Because yeah, you can. I mean, those date back like hundreds of years on like radio. And <laughs> Welcome to ninety two point five KNEW exactly. on the show today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. But it's like, funny. <laughs> It's funny you say that, Pat, because actually this morning on the walkathon, I was talking to a buddy of ours uh, who's an attorney at Endeavor Content, and uh, he was telling me how what they're looking for is scripted podcasts. Mm. So like Dear John, for example, which is something that they also, Endeavor produced, that's something that they bought. They but bought those are the like script. stories, right? Those aren't those conversations. Are, yeah, but those are what's making these guys money yeah, because right. it's attached to a big actor or a big voice or something like that or a big executive producer. And so that's what's quote unquote making money for these companies. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that that's the content necessarily that people are going to want eventually. Like at what point, at what po- at one point, sorry, you're going to get sick of the same stuff, right? But you're never going to get sick of the human story. 
that's why Humans of New York is so, such a successful brand is because you're following the stories of people and stories are going to always change depending on the time yeah. but if you script something you kind of have that expectation like I know how that's going to end or you know I know I can ex- you know expect something here so I just don't think that stories are ever going to go out of fad yeah I don't think so either and if you guys so obviously you're you have a podcast called the founder hour where you're interviewing founders in the Los Angeles area which in LA there's so many so that many. it's like it's, it's actually crazy. a beautiful concept because you know I think a lot of times when people are thinking about whatever it is you know content or a brand or a business or anything else they sort of think in really broad strokes like mm-hmm. oh i could do a million different things right but you guys immediately distilled that down into they have to be in la that eliminates like 99 yeah. of the bullshit and originally that was because we wanted to sit down with them like we didn't want to do a skype interview or like Same. a phone thing but then don't do we realized like that was the difference maker for us like if we had just said we're interviewing founders and entrepreneurs then it wouldn't have like been as compelling to the other person on the other side, which is like, okay, cool. Like you're like every other podcast out there. That's right. Even back then when not, you know, two years ago when it wasn't as many podcasts, like there were obviously so many still with that format. So it's like, it's always that one little thing, you know? And and for us, it it ended up being the fact that it's like LA based. Yeah. Well, I think the in-person element is important too. At least that's the way that I think about it. Like I don't do the Skype thing i don't want to do it i don't like it i don't like listening to it when i'm listening to podcasts Mm -hmm. it's just a little bit more impersonal you also get that weird semi-scripted barrier thing that happens not to mention sound yeah it's terrible yeah Yeah. and and like i've been on the receiving (laughs) end like on the skype part of somebody else's podcast and shout out to them Mm -hmm. glad i could be on the show but it's also just it's just the human interaction isn't there and of course that's the easiest thing that's right it's very, I mean, yeah. it's the same thing as a phone interview if you're trying to get a job or if you're interviewing somebody. You're not going to be able... I mean, like, I know myself. Like, if I do a phone interview, I'm not going to get hired. But if I sit down with you in person, you're probably going to fall in love with me, honestly. You know, yeah. I'm a little arrogant, obviously. But um, <laughs> just because you'll feel the energy, right? And as somebody who wants to work with people that, you know, give me good energy, I have to feel that in person. I'm not going to feel your energy over the phone. I might. I might feel it over a podcast. But I don't know how... You know how much you're actually exaggerating that in person it's very hard to bullshit your like your emotions and your energy like you you sense it you know we've had guests where we're like we they don't we know that they don't want to be there and it doesn't make for a good episode Weird. right but you know folks like you and there's a lot of folks like you on our show you automatically sense it and so pat and i get excited and so our energy level goes to like what our peak is right and it makes for better content for the listener because now they're like Okay, if these guys are all, like high energy, we're gonna be high energy while we're tuning in, right? Like they're gonna be actively listening. Yeah. But if we're just talking about, you know, we did this and we did that, and we're like, ah, I'm gonna be bored. Honestly, like there's so much content out there, you're gonna be like, I'm out next podcast. Yeah, I agree. It, it's even, and when I think about this podcast, I'm just always, I, I try to bring the energy as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Dude, yeah. you have great energy. I, I try. Dude, ever you since know, we met I'm you, fucking trying, I love man. your energy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, no, it's great. That's I appreciate great. that. You yeah. know, it, it, it is important, like, especially because, you know, whoever's listening to this right now, we are inside of your ears, right? Like we're actively in your brain, in your body, in some strange way, by virtue of like some which you can passively listen to intermediary. But it's still like it's like in your subconscious, right? Like it's not you don't have to visually sit down and like stare at a screen to really understand what's going on, right? Which is in, which is why podcasting is such an insane medium. Like, what kind of podcast do you guys listen to? I'm I'm curious. Um, so kind of how this yeah, thing, like, the, the inspiration was, I mean, how I built this is like one of the biggest podcasts and what honestly inspired. I remember I was, I was, I was commuting to work like two hours each way. So, um, I like at some point I'm a huge music fan, but at some point you just can't do it, especially early in the morning when you're like, just got out of bed and you're like, fuck, like how many songs can I, <laughs> exactly. And I need something to keep me awake and I need something to stimulate my mind. And this was like th- four years ago when like podcast was just starting, uh, I think it was like three, four years, four years ago. Um, and how I built this came out. I was listening to Ted Radio Hour, which is Guy Raz, the, uh, the host, also hosts. And then there was like an advert on that, which was, hey guys, like it's my new podcast, how I built this, interviewing entrepreneurs. Founders, hey guys, creators, idealists, whatever he says. Uh, <laughs> love Guy Raz. And, um, and so I listened to it as Sarah impression. Blakely, the Spanx founder, was the first guest. And, and then I remember like telling this guy about it. And I was like, dude, you have to listen to this. And he listened. And he's like, holy shit. And we just kind of got into podcasts. And we would like talk about different podcasts we would listen to. And since then, obviously, like millions of podcasts have come into the space. Mm-hmm. And now, um, one that we both like like a lot is Robin Hood Snacks. Is that what it's called? Robin Hood Snacks, Snacks yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, um, so they started off as a newsletter. It was called Market Snacks. 
Um, I think is it Jake and Nick or Nick and something? Nick and yeah, some Nick and something. Nick yeah. and something. <laughs> By the way, they have great energy. It's 15 minutes every day, and they just like it's like Pat and I, but like they're way more energetic, and it's just like they vibe they're off each in other all sync, day. Like the yeah, whole the time. whole time. Hold I don't. I don't know if there's someone on the back end cutting out like all <laughs> yeah. the stuff in yeah. between. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. So they got bought up by Robinhood. So now they're Robinhood snacks. And they talk about like just kind of what's going on in yeah. the, the business world, yeah. like on a daily basis. Yeah, so it comes out every day. I still listen to how I built this. Um, what else do I listen to? What else do we listen to? I'm trying to check my phone and see what I listen to. I used to listen to Planet Money for a while. HBR Idea Cast. Yeah. Um, Armchair Expert is a little too long for me. I like. I like politics, so I used to listen to Axe Files with David Axelrod, who was the uh, campaign advisor manager for Obama. Um, so that's a good one. He has a lot more political guests. I started listening to Dissect, which is, I don't know if you've heard of Dissect. Um, they kind of like go really into dissecting like a, a music piece. So like, oh, it could, right, I think this like season album. is an album or a song. Like in this, in this season, I think it's like, um, was it Kendrick Lamar's mm-hmm. Damn album? Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cool, but it's like at some point, sometimes it gets like too deep, yeah. where it's like let me just like kind of soak it in and, and put my own you know feelings like what I think yeah. towards it. But well, it's, it's good. It's, it's always weird about art when like you know I don't know. I of course I've produced art forever, both in music and visual form. And it's always a little weird to me when you have art critics or something like that because then they're like giving their subjective opinion right. on mm-hmm. this art that you created, which mm-hmm. only really you know why right. you did that it. That was my problem with and, art history class. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe you don't want to even tell anybody why you did it because you want the yeah. interpreter themselves to become part of the art. Right. right? right. And that's kind of the... Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, yeah. it's like, how do you know, like... 500 years ago this person right. thought was thinking this way when he was painting this. how do you know what? Michelangelo it was, it's was hungry you can it's tell a classic telephone right it's like this person told that person yeah. told that person and all of a sudden that's what it is now like no like let me look at it let me let me let me put two and two together myself you know like it's I don't know that's kind of my thing with, with going too deep into like criticizing uh, yeah like you said art music yeah, creative, creative. I even saw that with things. WeWork recently, um, yeah. in the sort of the sort of you know topically in the news, and Man. of course they bailed on their IPO for anybody who doesn't Thank know. God. Yeah, right. Um, and so the whole thing is in sort of a disaster. The CEO got ousted, and all this mm-hmm. different stuff. And then you know I'm on Twitter and I, I just see everybody kind of throwing shade and vitriol towards them, and like yeah. I get it, right? It's not good for sure, but it's just so easy to be a critic, isn't it? It is. It, it really is. So easy. It, really it is, is, but you know I I, I kind of like it. You know, because it forces transparency for founders and business owners that for so long didn't have to be transparent, right? Or even universities. Like, Pat and I went to USC. It's become the most <laughs> Disast- I mean, like, disastrous <sighs> since we left, right? I don't want to but, talk about that. <laughs> but again, like, the reason was because everything was being done under the table because they just wanted to further their whatever cause. And I get it, but now that's no longer acceptable. Right now, if you're not transparent... Your consumers are going to call you out on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, every, anywhere. They're mm-hmm. going to go to LA Times and newspapers, whatever it may be. So I think it forces founders and business leaders or just leaders in general to be ethical, number one, yeah. to be transparent and to do things the right way. Because, and those guys are the ones that win out, in my opinion. Yeah, and yeah. in this day and age, there's no reason why you can't have your own platform to say what you want to say like yeah. especially if you're in a high profile situation and i know in, in those cases yeah. you know it's very very difficult when you have like a board and all that kind of stuff you know trying to not influence but really make sure that you're not saying the wrong things but in this day and age man like you gotta you gotta be able to have that transparency and, and there's no ex- excuse to not yeah i think transparency is important and you know it's always like the double-edged sword of the openness of, of social media and yeah. the whole democratization of the internet right because on one hand you have sort of forced transparency like there sort of is no way to opt out if somebody just wants to pull out their iphone and videotape you like drunk eating a burrito at 2 a.m you just can. can't do it like you're yeah. not gonna be able to do anything about that yeah. um but on the other hand it also breeds like this troll culture or like this hater critic culture that you know maybe they're just gonna go hate on whoever's thing because they're either jealous of it they can't do it themselves or they're actually a fan trying to get attention mm-hmm. and so it's a very interesting dichotomy there and um mm-hmm. you know I, I know that youtube recently by default all of the comments on youtube are now filtered for like are you they? know abusive whatever oh, yeah. twitter, um, twitter too i think or for the most part have you seen that like when you scroll down it says like show more replies and oh yeah and then when you click it it's like all the shit <laughs> yeah. all the all the curse words yeah yeah, yeah. twitter's interesting because they allow porn on there it's crazy what yeah, I don't understand the it. fuck is going on? Oh, I don't understand <laughs> like, it. Dude, that's <laughs> I mean, crazy. Well, because so no one's going on Tumblr anymore. Yeah, that's probably it. 
And did Yahoo buy Tumblr? They did, but I don't, I don't know if they still own it. Yeah. I think yeah. Yahoo. And then I thought recently Verizon might have been involved. Ooh. I could be wrong. Isn't it weird when those giant tech companies yeah. just start buying up all whatever? Start, yeah, like moving it around like between those big companies. Yeah. And you just lose lose track. Yeah, you're just like shaving <laughs> off a, you yeah. know, one of your fingers and selling it over to Google or whoever. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's weird <laughs> with these social platforms. Like I feel like when one kind of like slacks at something or just isn't, you know, um, you know, investing in one aspect of it, the other one just kind of takes it over. Like I think Instagram recently like launched what is probably Threads. a Snapchat you know, big, Snapchat bigger Snapchat killer. Snapchat threat than what their stories uh, feature was, which is like a separate platform just for messaging, and it's ca- it's camera mm-hmm. first. So you open the app, it's like your camera. Oh, really? And then it's like you just all your friends. You have, yeah, yeah. It's like messaged, wh- yeah. I think it's like what Whoa. Facebook Messenger became for Facebook is what they're trying to do with Threads and Instagram, but it's only your close friends. So like, I'll get DMs from non close friends of mine, but it won't show up in this app. Right. So I don't really know what they're going to do with it, but. That's also, interesting. Yeah. yeah, so they're basically just trying to make yeah. uh, Snapchat tap out of the yeah. whole situation. Exactly. <laughs> it's more like communication for your like Damn. inside circle, not like the outer world. Right. So I fact checked myself. It said in 2013, Yahoo paid uh, 1.1 billion for Tumblr. Good. But then I don't know when Verizon got them. Verizon has now agreed to sell Tumblr to WordPress owner Automatic for an undisclosed amount, probably less than. Uh, Less than the original. Oh, yeah, it. that's a depreciating um, asset for they sure. Actually said, for sure. They said they reportedly bought it at three million. So imagine one point one billion oh. to three million. What? Not good. Oh. No bueno. Same thing with MySpace, man. Remember that shit? Oh, MySpace music. Dude, if that? you grew up in the nineties and the early two thousands, and you, you do like MySpace, everyone had a MySpace. Oh yeah, you had to have had a MySpace. Dude, yeah. MySpace, like where I was at, nobody had one because I lived in the middle <laughs> really? of nowhere in uh, rural yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> but like everybody in the cities did. Yeah. So all my friends were like living in Sacramento or LA yeah, yeah, yeah. or like all over the U.S. Yeah. in these bigger cities. Yeah. yeah. So it was like sort of my my node of outreach for sure. That yeah. and like I think I learned how to code on using MySpace. Oh yeah. <laughs> like remember like <laughs> you could edit like yeah. your like oh yeah my your God. CSS your HTML exactly. bro. You talking about GLC? Cities, you talking about angel fire, son? I Thomas, don't... my space editor, oh, yeah. my pit, pit my profile. <laughs> pit my profile. <laughs> I'll tell you who's not doing that, Facebook. <laughs> no. Yeah. You can't edit shit. You oh, can't yeah. even add a song to your profile. <laughs> In my space, you could. Remember that? Oh, yeah. The song to the profile was the best that thing was ever. That my favorite part. Yeah. You could feature stuff, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Facebook was weird. I remember when it came out, I was like, dude, I hope this thing dies immediately. <laughs> because because I, I liked my space. Like, you can customize yeah. your own page, yeah. right? It's almost like a miniature website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this is before the Wizzy wig yeah. sort of ruby on rails shopify woocommerce that whole situation mm-hmm. and so it was, it was really like a cool creative outlet it was and and was. you just had more control over your stuff mm-hmm. and then on facebook it was just kind of like okay well here's this stale platter that you just gotta MySpace. do like the thing yeah. was if <laughs> that's you a were, great way yeah, to put it if you're creative and you like kind of went you know out of your way to do some research online on how to like customize your profile and make cool things and like it was kind of like a like a clout thing like people would be like holy shit how'd you do that like yeah like i love your profile like how can how can i do that on mine like it was it was that it, it gave more creativity <laughs> or creative power to the users yeah like, like how do you have like um, pink stars falling from the top of your page what the <laughs> fuck is that <laughs> yes <laughs> you know but i remember when i signed up for facebook nobody was on there i mean i think it was like early high school days yeah um it was like right after they didn't know or they allowed non-college or dot edu people to sign up all my friends were on MySpace, and I was like, guys, get on Facebook. Like, no one, I had like 30 friends. You're, you're a pioneer. Bro. I was a pioneer for sure. I <laughs> uh, did not get paid equity for that by Zucky. So, um, obviously, the pioneering did nothing for me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just crazy how far it's come in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, like, look at it now. Like, they might get dismantled. You know, I doubt it, but yeah, it might not. happen. It might Elizabeth happen. Warren is just, you know, God. going strong. Yeah, she needs to just, uh, you know, take a seat on the bench and relax. That's what I think needs <laughs> yeah, to happen. I mean, or, or Bernie or who had a heart attack because he was just yelling so much. Like, <laughs> did you hear about that? No. no. Yeah. He had a heart attack like a day yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, nobody's going to vote for him now, so yeah. you can well, count, yeah. functionally count him out of the race. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so. it's going to be... I mean, there's only one great way to sap voter confidence in voting for you is to almost die. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless yeah. of the reason. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. yeah exactly. that's a, that is a yeah, he's confidence he's sucker. But yeah, politics, old man, that's a whole, that's a whole different problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different problem. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, you guys, uh, you guys messing with TikTok at all? Dude, I've, I've been on, on it TikTok. lately. Um, just kind of like cruising through it and seeing like, I, my, my first reaction is how amazing of a platform it is for music. Yeah, like music distribution and just getting your song out there. Like I know, like some of these songs, like 
weren't even that big. I remember like listening to it like a year ago or like, a couple years ago when it first came out, and now they're like the biggest song on TikTok. Like everyone is like every, you scroll and just everyone's, and I'm like wow, like. Because if this platform wasn't there, that wouldn't have happened. It's almost like MySpace because MySpace was, and you know, I've, I've been in a lot of bands my entire life, and so MySpace was like this. The other reason that I really liked it and I didn't like it, didn't like Facebook, yeah. is that, that MySpace had mu- music built into it everywhere, like every band that and you was have famous. A music profile. Yeah, music profile. Yeah. yeah, we I had a music two different ones for two different bands, yeah. and like that is where people found out about your band is mm-hmm. like on MySpace, and they could listen to the songs and the player and all this cool stuff, and TikTok in a very weird way, and I, and I don't think it was planned this way they're doing they're fulfilling that need that was right. lost in like whatever it was 2009 yeah. or something like that right and um yeah I, I think it is a powerful uh tool for music creation like you see some of these songs i, I was at the uh, a bar the other day and the song comes on and i know it's a tiktok song you yeah, know 100 yeah. percent. and my friend doesn't know he's like he's like what the fuck is song why is everybody so excited about yeah. the song i'm like bro you don't know gordon ramsay right, right. <laughs> you know? i feel like gordon <laughs> ramsay yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh man you know but, but it's it's, I, I mean i have it downloaded i check it out once in a while i think it is like a different generational thing though like i don't know if it's for my age anymore <laughs> you know like which is from weird, a, from which a, is like weird. A, from a creation standpoint i think the kids on there are so like are going to be way like when they're old old enough to like actually be able to you know go out and create their own like videos and that kind of stuff are going to mm-hmm. be way more talented than the creators of today like yeah, it's like a youtube so starter creative. package it's insane yeah. yeah i mean vine for our generation it was yeah. vine yeah and then you know they killed that thing R. off R. vine man yeah, yeah. We're rest in peace vine. what a great platform yeah. right? i mean the celebrities and like video creators of today who are like the biggest people in the world started off yeah yeah vine, which and, is I, insane. and i think yeah. in terms of like content and like what TikTok's doing is great, obviously, and I think it's the short form, you know, is becoming and will become, I think, the normality. The other day, we were talking to a friend of ours who's a producer, and she was talking to us about Quibi that's coming out, I think, in the next year or so. Yeah, Quibi is a partnership between Meg Whitman and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, who's like one of the Quibi. biggest. Quibi. Uh, he's like the founder of Dreamworks. It's not out yet. With like yeah. Spielberg and all those guys. Um, Interesting. Billion dollar seed. Basically, Netflix. Yeah. Netflix for short form content. Yeah. Netflix for short. And what is short form? Is that two minutes or less? I think less than 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Less than 30 minutes. Less than Smart. 30 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes probably is the sweet spot. And I was talking to Michael today who works at Endeavor. And he said they already have like five or six deals with uh, Quibi. Quibi like platforms. So, uh, Quibi uh, shows. So they're going to be buying them. And yeah, they're so, super under the yeah. radar. But like in the next year, yeah. she was telling yeah. us like you're, everyone's going to be Shout out, out to Quibi. Let me know Shout if you're looking for think, somebody think, to be on a fucking show. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I, I think they're pretty big on it. I think obviously with a billion dollar seed round. Um, you know they're probably going to really roll it out big but again I still think that Netflix is going to be a leader in the space Uh, but I think overall I think in the next five years we're going to see streaming wars like the real streaming wars where you have Disney and HBO and Hulu Netflix Peacock which is the worst name of all time from NBC Um, it's called Peacock yeah their streaming platform is going to be called Peacock I mean uh, and I get it it's it's your logo (laughs) but like I'm not going to be proud to be like, yeah, you know, did you watch that show on Peacock? You're like, no, I did not. Because I don't have Peacock. Maybe just go with bird. I don't yeah, know. Feather. Maybe. Yeah, beak. Just, I don't know. Or just anything else but Peacock. Yeah. <laughs> or like, what's the part of the Peacock called? Like the, like the, the, yeah, tail, the tail fan? I'm sure there's a name for it. Yeah, just, yeah. just call it NBC Streaming. Like, how hard was that? Yeah, or that. Yeah, yeah or that. Because yeah, everybody like, knows you yeah, have brand recognition in NBC. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was a weird thing about Periscope. Yeah. You know, so, so Twitter owns Periscope, is right? Is it still a thing? It, it is a thing. And the, the, the thing that surprised me so much about it was just, you know, it, it was a bad brand decision cool. to launch Periscope in the way that it did. Because it should have been Twitter, Twitter. Live, yeah. right. of course. Yeah. And and so they were first to market with Periscope, by the way. There was no Instagram Live or Facebook Live yet. Yeah. I remember Meerkat. Remember Meerkat? Yeah. Um, that oh, was yeah. Like kind of around the same time. And they like just wanted to destroy it. And I think they did. I don't think Meerkat's around anymore. Yeah, I don't think so either. Oh, probably, yeah. probably somebody bought them and paid, yeah. them, paid them out the founders. I remember mistaken. I think the Meerkat became something. It might have been... Might have been like something related to Vine or HQ Trivia or something like that. Interesting. I think one of the founders was, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, well, someone, someone fact uh, checking me on that. But. That's what happened with TikTok too. Yeah. It, it was uh, musically. Musically, that's right. Yeah. It did, that, that did not become TikTok. Did it? Is it two different yeah. things? No, no, no. It became TikTok. Interesting. Yeah, it was acquired, and then uh, they turned the whole thing into TikTok. Where is people that are Tencent? Like, Does Tencent own them? I believe so. Yeah, it's definitely a big Chinese conglomerate. Tencent is owns TikTok. Yeah. 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 yeah they're massive. Who also owns like Epic Games and and Riot Games and. Yeah. 
it's insane. Which is super smart. Yeah. I mean, Monopoly. I've been messing around on the TikTok. You know, you know what's awkward to see though is like you know we're relatively young still, you know, and relatively. yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, we're not twelve years old, young, yeah. <laughs> but we're young enough. Yeah. And I'll go on there. I'll be, see people like my parents' age that are like fifty doing yeah, it. Really, and it's so awkward. I know. I, the kids will get their doing. parents in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised parents are on TikTok. There's a few, like, yeah. Oh, I think Howie Mandel's on there. Oh, yeah. Um, Howie's a child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's trying to figure it out. There's a few different ones, but, dude, it's hilarious to watch him try to figure it out. I, I still think that it's, even though it's, like, mass, I just don't know if it's, like, I don't mainstream yet. It's definitely not. I don't, like, maybe with, like, the younger generation, but I yeah, think... Yeah, I think, I think, like, you're probably, we're probably, even, like using it as users yeah. we're still very removed from that like right. I'm sure kids in high school that's all they talk about yeah oh for sure yeah. yeah but the same was true for Snapchat right yeah dead right yeah. and the yeah, difference I mean, though which we, we always talk about like from the beginning like Snapchat was very much focused on internal like your inside circle yeah and that isn't a big enough opportunity when it comes if your model is advertising like who are you advertising to like your your reach is way lower than what it could be on like a outward facing platform like TikTok, like Instagram. Like it just doesn't make sense for, as a business. Well, I agree. They've altered their entire model. Like we talked about this recently. Like I think Snapchat's become a porn platform, um, like a legitimate one where like oh, yeah. actual like webcamers or whatever they call themselves. Yeah, they're their paid have, like, their Snapchat shows, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like my prediction is Pornhub will buy Snapchat. <laughs> what a bold prediction! I like that prediction. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because Dude. it's going to be accessible porn. Well, it makes sense. It does make sense. I mean, that's what they're using it. That's functionally what Tumblr sort of became, right. yeah. you know, yeah. in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And Snapchat is quickly becoming yeah. that. If yeah. I'm CEO of Pornhub tomorrow, on Monday, first acquisition, porn, uh, Snapchat. Oh, wow. Yeah, I guess they probably have more money than Snapchat. Huh? They do have we, more we money. Were, yeah, we, we searched it the other day. We no were curious, like, their how domain's big. worth like their domain. $20 billion or something. Their domain is worth some billions billion of dollars. Like oh $3 billion, I think. my yeah. God. I mean, they're, I mean, think about it. They're, like, <laughs> it's, it's they're the hit. biggest website Millions in the world. Millions of times right. a second. It's insane. <laughs> it's like one of the most popular <laughs> web pages of all Yeah, time. and now it's like you're crowdsourcing <laughs> porn. Right. I mean, whether or not people think it's taboo or whatever, like it's... You know, it is what it is. It is the free market, so yeah. So, and people are consuming it and are going to forever consume it. And so, why not? Like, if I'm Snapchat, honestly, I would think about it. Wow. Because it's, people are going to use texting and Instagram for messaging and Facebook. Oh. They're not going to go on Snapchat and send pictures to each other. They're just going to be like, we'll do that on Instagram now. You know? Yeah. So, just make it a full on porn platform. That's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, what else do you do? And also, it has, Snapchat. you can like versus like other platforms, like you can be anon more anonymous. I think on Snapchat, right? Yeah. Like versus oh, yeah. like an Instagram yeah. or something. Like so that. now you can consume porn anonymously and or even create make porn anonymously. I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't know how you could create it, but. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but that's a whole. I mean, hey man, I mean, they could get creative. But like, yeah, Pornhub. I, Pornhub is. If, if, I wish Pornhub was a public company. I, I, would, definitely would, I would definitely invest. Hold on, definitely Do you think that it it is? So I don't know the answer to this question. Actually, I'm thinking about it. Do you think the FCC would allow a pornography company to go IPO on the public market? I think so. Why not? That's a content so. creation it's, company. It's, 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 yeah, I guess. It's, it's legal. It, it's ta look, it's Porn taboo. Legal. It's legal. Yeah, it's taboo. It's legal. As long as it doesn't become like what back pages became, right. then it's legal. As long as you're not soliciting prostitution, right. then it's legal. If anything, Pornhub is like probably the most legal one because it's yeah. such a like a popular one. Yeah, like, I mean, everybody there, knows you it. Know, I'm sure there's like websites out there that are much more low key that are yeah. like maybe illegal yeah. at some point. But um, Pornhub, yeah, like I don't, I don't. And as long as the creators are getting paid and all that, yeah. all that stuff, then um, honestly, oh, that's it's, interesting. I, I think that I, I'm sure there's a reason Pornhub is now going public because then they would have to share their numbers and all that stuff. I mean, they're a private company. It's probably they're they printing them? money. Oh, they probably probably for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like, God, I mean, just the opportunities that they have is endless. Like, would I want to start a company like that? I mean. <sighs> no, but yes. Right? It's like, it's man, one. I don't know. <laughs> like, what do you tell your family? Well, look, everybody's got their price, right? So, like, yeah. if, if, if you told me today that I had to play founder of a porn company, yeah. if I got paid, like, $2 billion, I'd be like, I can sacrifice a year of my life and a bunch of therapy. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. I mean, $2 billion? I can buy as much therapy as I need, dude. But you're, you're, running, you're running a content company, and the content just happens to be porn. I mean, like, that's, I'm sure, how they're viewing it. Yeah. And, like, whether it's advertising, whether it's acquisitions of other companies or whatever or creators and bringing creators on there it's a straight-up content company so yeah. 
and it's legal, so why not? I mean, that's what, what I was So it's a taboo thing, right? The, like, yeah. porn's a taboo yeah. thing, and, and, and for many of good reasons, I think, yeah. um, and some of bad reasons. But what do you guys think in the future there will be that is taboo today hmm. that won't be in the near, if you call it a 10-year purview, a 20-year purview, that will be monetized in some way? So an example would be cannabis of yeah, course was, right uh, as we'll probably soon see that case or one of those cases reach the supreme court and hopefully they allow people to shamoke the weed mm-hmm. um because we never killed anybody right um right so, yeah and, and i, mean, so I wonder like what else Lowell, Lowell cafe just opened up in west hollywood which is like the first i guess ever uh yeah. cafe that yeah. like yeah. Uh, weed cafe, like, weed. cafe yeah. which is yeah exactly like you know things that were, we actually had this conversation recently, I feel like, with somebody, but yeah. it was like, it was an interesting, like, the phenomenon of, like, things that are taboo, like, you know, I remember even when I was growing up, like, in the early 2000s and, like, late 90s, like, no one ever, if you talked about weed, it was like, oh, big no-no, like, <laughs> dude, you're, like, a drug addict, you're, like, a pothead, like, <laughs> yeah. you're not doing anything with your life, mm-hmm. so it's crazy to see how far that's come. Yeah. Um, things now. Something that came to my mind, which is, it's, it's, I don't think it happened, but hey, who knows, um, spouse sharing. Spouse sharing? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, like a marketplace for that. A marketplace. Wow. Right? It's like why? Not? I mean, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of it, but like, I mean, I wouldn't be on the platform. Yeah, yeah. but I'm just thinking, like, but you might as a business. There's for sure somebody that's gonna be on there. Someone's gonna be on there for sure. It's good, like, what is it called? Swinging? Swingers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like essentially monetizing off swingers. That's interesting. Yeah, it's like ride sharing. Except for kind of different. Could call it ride, you could call it ride share. <laughs> call it ride share. <laughs> speaking of, actually, speaking of MySpace, now that, I, I, um, I remember like, remember when you could put like your relationship status? Yeah. I think Swinger was one of them. I think it was. It was. Doesn't yeah. surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Shout I mean, out to Tequila Tequila, by the way, for becoming <laughs> famous what on MySpace. Legend. What a legend. Well, you yeah. know, what do you think about that? What's your answer? What would your answer be to that? Like, what, mm. what would be taboo? Because it's hard to determine now based on what we know. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I think of a lot of things, obviously, marijuana is pretty, yeah. uh, pretty obvious yeah. one. Um, I think that uh, potentially... CRISPR, like the genetic modification of certain mm. human beings, it's mm. sort of the embryonic stage or is probably going to want to be those. Yeah, cloning or even just like, not necessarily cloning, but getting in there with CRISPR and gene editing your mm. children. Mm-hmm. I think now if you told people, hey, you know right. what, I'm, gonna, I'm about to have a kid. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, and also what I'm doing is I'm gene editing him to be seven foot tall, 400 pounds jacked and yeah. live to 300 years old. That's they'd a good be one. Like, That's a good one. They'd be like, whoa, man, what the fuck are you doing? Right. But in 20 years... I don't know. Like child customization? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can think see it happening. I not, think to like, will, not to like open be. Pandora's box here and go here, but I, th- I feel like... Um, <laughs> you just opened it. I feel like a lot of this stuff stems from like just religion. For sure. Like, yeah. And and over time, if we like we were to look at the influence or like, I guess the... Um, what's the word? Like the strength of, of just religion and how, how much it's playing a part in like society. Like it kind of seems like it's like... You know, less. I come from like a religious family, but it's interesting yeah. to see like where it's it's like less and less prevalent. Yeah, I mean, I come from an, an absolutely zero religious family, yeah. but a very hyper religious area in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, right, and you know, so so I've certainly you know seen that there's a church on every corner, the whole mm-hmm. thing, and um, you know, shout out to churches and religions. You know, no shade being thrown your way, but yeah. um, when I look at the the market, what I see is a decline in the demand for religion across the board, mm-hmm. and especially here in LA, it's interesting because you have a lot less religious people here than you do in call it central Kansas or something right. of that nature right. or Iran or take your right. pick, you know? Um, and so what that manifests itself into in the strangest way is that people start worshiping crystals and fucking horoscopes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the crazy, it's weird. It's like just, palm readers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you watched uh, going clear? Oh yeah. Oh. One of the best documentaries yeah. of all time. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's like, see, the thing with religion, I feel like, is, and I guess you don't put in Pandora's box, I'm going to say this. Um, I think it's one of those things where, see, like, I believe in God, right? But I don't necessarily think there needs to be a religion around that. Right. Like, there doesn't have to be a business around my faith or anybody else's faith for that matter. Mm-hmm. But things like going to church or, you know, certain things that are revolved around that, um, those are just man made things. Like, yeah, sure, there are places of worship, but, like, People are monetizing off of these churches and religions, like whether it's Scientology, Christianity, Islam, whatever it may be. It's it's a business. Like that's my viewpoint. Yeah. A lot of people probably agree with me, but don't want to say it publicly. It's true. And so, 
have your faith. I think it's, 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 I think it's important to believe in something bigger than yourself, whatever that is. Um, and I'm, I won't like project, but that's what my belief is. But I don't think necessarily there needs to be a whole like cult around that, yeah. right? Like Pat and I talk about this all the time. Like we know certain people and leaders that create culty environments. It's not good. It doesn't end up well. No. Like someone is going to get hurt. Yeah. Either the cult leader or the followers are going to get hurt. Like it doesn't end up being a positive thing for people. So I'm just not a fan of that aspect of faith and whatever religion may be. I think that we'll. I think we'll see an evolution of that eventually. I think there's. I don't think Christianity will be on the decline, or people won't stop believing in God or Buddha or whatever it may be. I think the way in which we worship those things and the way in which we view them will change. And I think it will become better. And if not, if not better, they'll just be according to the times. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's just my yeah. thought. And it also yeah. depends on, like, where you're living in the world, right? So, you know, in Scandinavia, they were all pagan, uh, right? And and then Christianity came in. And so 90% of the population there is all, they're all atheists, right? Mm-hmm. They just don't. They just don't yeah. believe. And so you, you have that where, you know, you contrast with that, you know, Saudi Arabia, for instance, right, where I would imagine, I don't know what the number is, but 95% plus are probably Sunni Muslim, I would mm-hmm. assume. Mm-hmm. Um, and the U.S. Is, is pretty religious, right? right. Um, but, yeah, I think that at least my personal philosophy on, on the whole religion thing is, like, I, I just don't know. And so no one can tell me that yeah. they know because they I know I don't know, and I also nobody know they knows. don't know, and I know nobody knows. Nobody knows. And, and and what I was thinking the other day, you know, this is sort of my my theory on the whole thing is, I think that um, you know, if, if, for instance, uh, I'll break it down this way. Uh, so you have a dog, right? You love your dog. He's a cute little shit, right? Come here, dude. Oh, you know, he's always happy to see you and stuff. And you can teach him to sit and shake and like beg and play dead or whatever, and that's great. But he's never going to be able to like have a conversation with you mm-hmm. or tell you like what one times seven is. There's mm-hmm. just no way. And so then you think of a chimpanzee that shares 98% of the same DNA as we do. And they still can't do that. You still can't teach them algebra or even simple math, mm-hmm. right? And they can't. It just it just beyond their genetic capacity to mm-hmm. be able to think like that. Mm-hmm. And when I think of sort of the meaning of all of this and how the universe was created, I think that it's a very realistic possibility, if not an assurity, that our own chromosomal limitations won't allow us to fully understand right. how everything got here. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, like, we, like this conversation can end. Like, we'll never end. Sorry, we'll, right. it'll just go on for yeah. so long. But that, there's just no answer. Yeah. There's no, there's yeah. no finite. Like, this is what it is. Like, there's no, there's just no. As much as I don't like talking about religion, I do think it's one of the most fascinating topics to hear about people discussing. Yeah, because like Pat said, like it it can go on for hours and days. And, like, it gets me, you yeah. thinking. It yeah. gets you thinking. And to me, it's interesting. Like it again, like going back to like you know the, the taboo stuff and and how it kind of stems from that and like you know everything that for example certain religions will say like is bad for you or you shouldn't do that eventually i think you know humanity just kind of i don't want to say rebels against but kind of realizes like who said who like for yeah. what like you know um so i kind of feel like that's you know at the end of the day you can believe what you want to believe but over time i, I kind of just feel like that's the effect it's going to have and more and more people because of you know all these other bad things that kind of have stemmed from religion too like wars and you know just terrible things yeah um well, it's just, also like a tribal thing too yeah, right yeah. it's like even you know if you take away like the existential existential uh, question of the universe and how we all got here and what the meaning of all this is and like the traditional religious view on things being a Raiders fan is also a religion, right? Yeah. Like, like loving yeah. LA yeah. Lakers is a religion. Yeah. Yeah. And people just get, you know, they uh, sometimes they fight each other in the stands. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. they yeah. get pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's there is definitely some deep tribal desire to just be mm-hmm. part of any lit, you know, number any of group groups. Of people. Yeah. Right? You want to identify with some group of humans that also identify in the same group because you kind of feel cool or accepted or, or something like that, right? Whether it's a, you know, you're a Misfits fan or, you know, you're yeah, one of those. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, that's interesting. So you guys have, have interviewed like so many interesting people. Right. I mean, yeah. you had Dr. Drew on the show. Um, you've had a, a, t- a ton of folks. Like, w- what kind of shit have you guys learned yeah. from talking? I love how you say Dr. Drew because yeah. we were talking about this the other day. It's like the most underwhelming episode we've had because, in terms of like, um, like numbers, listenership, because we feel like it was one of the best ones we've had. Like the conversation was great. Dr. Drew's just Dr. Amazing. Drew, yeah, amazing guy. Man. Um, but like, it's not even like a probably top, one of the best top, top out there. Honestly. It's not even a top fifteen. Easily. 
or top 20 Whoa. which is crazy out of like 120 episodes that's like, so fascinating yeah. maybe it's because they've heard him on uh, what is it um, Love, Love, Love Line, Line. <laughs> for like you know 10 years of their childhood well he also like his full time job at this point is podcasting with like Adam Carolla like Right. You know, that's all they do. But I think for us, it was cool because, well, we went to his house. It was amazing. Kind of, It was literally like kind of this situation. And um, he is just so good. I mean, like, he we again, we didn't even prep him. And he told us he actually preferred that. And we were talking about anything, you know, like, and everything. And he's just so wise because he speaks from experience, right? Like, almost, like, almost all the time I feel like I speak because I have an idea or a thought or an opinion or I can see things perhaps a little differently than others with him it's like he speaks from experience so the things that he's saying are so on point like and he works with so many different people across different generations so you know that was definitely an interesting one it was very different than the founder hour even though he was like a founder of Loveline and whatever his own (laughs) brand Um, yeah we consider like founder really as anyone who's um, like a creator taken you know a big risk to forge their own path and, and put something out there in the world that maybe didn't exist before and just kind of anyone anyone who you would think as an entrepreneur is like you don't have to have a, a company of like 20 employees to be a founder in our opinion right like yeah. any creator is a, is a founder of their own brand yeah. or their own business right yeah you know, i was um, telling someone recently uh, who was asking us about the podcast so a lot of times pat and i just get like the, all they know about us is that we podcast um which i don't mind whatsoever by the way uh they're like oh how's the podcast it's great fantastic thank you uh and it's cool because you're like you listen to our podcast and chances are they don't uh they just want to they want to act like they want to be part of this whole you know journey and it's, it's cool um and you know what i was thinking was and we always say this now is we've been doing this almost two years 115 plus episodes and it almost feels like we've gotten our like MBA degree as a result of doing this podcast because mm-hmm. and Pat went to business school I went to law school like we are quote unquote educated but by hearing the stories of what founders have gone through whether it's one business or 13 businesses that they have uh, it's, it's just amazing to see what are the things that they do that help them in their everyday business life or even just everyday outside of business life. Or seeing how their brain works, like we'll yeah. ask questions like not even related to their story, just like anything topical. Yeah. And kind of just seeing how they formulate their answers and what they say. It's yeah. it really does serve as like a case study, if you right. will, like something that you would do in business school. It's it's honestly like, you know, what it's become, you know, when Pat and I started this there was really no intent besides we we just wanted to sit down with people and talk to them. Um, eventually what it became for us was a learning experience for us. And then eventually it became a learning experience for other people. Uh, and eventually it became, honestly, a way for Pat and I to expand our personal network with all the doers and movers and shakers in L.A. that can really introduce us to anybody we want in at least the L.A., if not beyond a uh, business entrepreneurial scene. But for a lot of people, I think those that listen, it's become an entrepreneurial like class. You know, instead of going to, and getting your MBA, which, again, like if you're doing that, that's great. But this could almost be a supplement to that because in school you're taking it case by case or you're learning about these big different like ideas and strategies that you can employ. A lot of times what we've learned, I mean, it's it's much simpler than that. You know, it's it's little things that they might have done that made a massive difference. And sure, 20 years after it might be a massive case study at Harvard and Stanford and they're dissecting it just like you were talking about art. But the intent of it originally wasn't this like full on thing that like, oh my God, if this happens, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen. It's just like them doing it. Like even the biggest companies, they don't have it all figured out. And it's almost encouraging to folks like Pat and I and to other people that you don't have to have necessarily everything figured out. You know, just trying it out, doing little by little, asking yeah. for help. And, it, and it it's kind of like, it's also yeah. the same reason why a lot of people like, like reading like biographies and autobiographies rather than, you know, fiction like whoever those people are because um you know there's something to be learned about stories and and how someone was able to navigate even though that was their story you might pick certain things from it you know out of it that apply to you and and something you might be going through right now or have gone through that like oh shit now i know how i could have dealt with that situation because this person was in a similar so um that's been you know like in a in a structural you know education system whether it's business school or whatever it might be um by the time you you know, you start getting a, a regimen and uh, sorry, like a what do you call it? Like a yeah, like a curriculum regimen, sometime. curriculum exactly. Going like at some point, it becomes outdated, and I just keep teaching the same old shit, and people mm-hmm. aren't like aren't getting value out of it anymore. But with something like, you know, even not a podcast, but something like of like similar to a podcast where it's in real time and it's people sharing their stories about shit they're going through in the business world right now. Um, 
there's a lot of value in that. I think so too. It's cathartic also, right? And like when you're yeah. in business school or whatever school you're in, you're also just getting the perspective right. of one dude or one chick and that's it, right? Like that one person is just going to tell you what they've experienced in their previous 40 years at right. the ad agency or whatever they've been doing. Yeah. And then also maybe a, you'll bring in a guest speaker or something like that. Yeah. Um, but really it's just one person's perspective and what you get with something like a podcast or a YouTube channel or something like you guys do. Um, you know, it's it's sort of a broad swath. You you get to see a bunch of different perspective for a lot cheaper too. Well, yeah, I mean for free, <laughs> a whole lot cheaper. Oh <laughs> it's yeah, for free. I mean, it's your time. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. It. I mean, and again, I'm not hating on business school because I think there's an avenue and lane for everybody. And some people prefer going to business school and they like the structure. And I'm sure there's a lot of business schools that have a more practical approach as well. But even if you're at a job, if you're working for someone and you've listened to something that we've said or that a founder of ours has said. That's something that you can try to utilize in your everyday job and see what that does for you. Like, it's not a one size fits all strategy. And we found that a lot of people that listen to our podcast are founders and entrepreneurs and leaders. They're those are that's like that's become our audience is the people that are already doing it, not like the entrepreneurs per se. And again, there's a lot of those folks, and you know, props to them. Like, I'm sure that a lot of them will do something. But everybody listens for a different reason, which is cool for us. We didn't pick like. We're going to target the college student, <laughs> right? It was like, for us, we're going to target the founders. Like, that's our client. And whoever wants to listen, that's a whole different ballgame. Like, like our parents listen now, right? Yeah. And, you know, they're not trying to start a new company. But for them, it's more entertainment, you know? Or they just want to hear their... Or they just want to hear us doing something. Yeah. You know? Like, are they actually going to the be, podcast every fucking day? Be proud um, of what, what are these guys doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> but, but, it's cool, but it's cool to see, like... The fact that the older generation now even understands what podcasting is, mm -hmm. right? Like you could slowly see like radio not dying, but changing and shifting. And the listenership has gone from like radio to podcast, sometimes even from YouTube to podcasts. It'd be crazy if po a podcast was like a prerequisite for like a job or something like listening to it and you had like a little quiz on it or something. It's smart idea. At least certain episodes of stuff. Yeah. I think that happened yeah. to us. Because it's education. Did it? Yeah. yeah, with clutter. Really? I don't know if it's a prerequisite, oh. but like, <laughs> so we interviewed Ari Mir, who's the founder of Clutter, uh, who's who lives around like Culver City, or not live, sorry, the company's around Culver City. Super and, smart uh, dude. Super smart wow. dude, one raised of, a lot that, of money. That was probably one of our best ones. Yeah. Too. Nice. And um, th th he's, I think the number one or number two or number three, like best listened to episode for our show. And it's because it's on their like careers website or something uh, or, like, or on their website. Smart. And so if you're interviewing, it's a great idea to go listen to the story of the founder because now you know the intent of the company. So what better than to talk about on your interview than why this company exists and if that matches your personal intent, motive, or purpose, or do I or like whatever. the founder of the company? Yeah. Like, do oh, I trust yeah. this person? Exactly. Well, it's also authentic, right? Because yeah. Yeah, oftentimes what you'll see is like a super highly produced yeah. corporate video. Yeah. When I started back in 1974, my pop said you had to work hard, and that's why I started, <laughs> you know, Billy's Lumber Company. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, as if it's, anyone cares. Like, yeah, it's kind of like, <laughs> ooh, yeah. you know, but if it's just a podcast talking to you two yeah. fucking guys, yeah. like, yeah, exactly. there's like, no script. Like, yeah. Two clowns, like, just interviewing like you know we don't even know what we're talking about half the time yeah it's like um, the most authentic way to get to know it is because sure. we're your audience we're like potential interviewers like, and people, like yeah. guests will often ask yeah. us like can i curse it's like we want you to curse because yeah. it's like that's your like true self if yeah. that's your true self then be your true self yeah i'm the same way uh, yeah. yeah i mean as an employee i would love to see like the founder of my company or the leader of my company being that expressive like really kind of going into in depth of like not only the company but themselves and what they're passionate about because i think that says a lot about the way the company is built right right and that's why we focus a lot more on the founder as opposed to the company because a lot of times the founders that we interview aren't only doing one company or they're not going to stay at that company or they're going to start another company or they're going to they're investors in other companies so and you could tell that pattern like there's a lot of folks we've interviewed that have since gone on to start another company or like a perfect example is Christopher Gavigan who started Honest Company and now he started Prima, a CBD company. And he's the same person, <laughs> right? Like yeah. he, he hasn't changed. He's just a different company. That's why we don't focus on the Honest Company. Right. We talk more about why they went into this. What are the things that they do? What makes them tick? What makes them so good at their job? Um, and I think that's kind of been the standout thing for us is that people know that we're a founder-based podcast, not a business or the company-based podcast. Yeah, I, I view it the same way. Like, yeah, it's cool that you got, you know, your business doing whatever. And, like, maybe it does cool stuff, and I want to talk about that yeah. for sure in yeah. some parts. But also it's more like, hey, by the way, 
uh, a business is just a collective. It's a it's a cybernetic collective of human beings, minds yep. connecting and creating things mm-hmm. out of literally thin air mm-hmm. and putting them into the universe. It's like a really right. crazy cybernetic right. organism of some kind that just creates products or services and provides them to other people who then also give their input and then co- it collectively grows into this new and different thing and it keeps going. And I think even within sort of company culture and, and, and startup culture, there's this thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, you have to make sure that uh, it's brand number one, which, yes, of course, it has to be, but also, like, show who your employees are. Mm-hmm. Like, who's who's sending the pallets of product right, places? Right. You yeah. know? Like, who's, who's, the, who's the guy or gal that's, like, in the Excel spreadsheet making sure that the retailers get their stuff or whatever, yeah. you know? And Th- Those are the real MVPs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. And, like, well, you know, rarely do we get, like, a guest saying, like, oh, I don't want to talk about this or that. Um, but, like, usually it's about, like, numbers and it's like good because like we, cause we right. don't care like we don't, yeah. we're not even like we're not even talking about that kind of stuff like it doesn't matter it's more so like who you are and, and if what you've built is cool like and you have a story like amazing it's yeah. almost concerning to me if a founder only talks about their company of course because like for me at least like I don't want I, it's not that I don't want to work for the rest of my life but for me work is a vehicle to eventually do or making money is eventually a vehicle to do the things that I actually want to do like you know like for example Bill Gates I think is a perfect example of that even though he grinded his ass off for god knows how many years but still like his biggest impact is coming after his quote unquote career right and I think that living in LA especially or United States but specifically LA and New York perhaps we're always about work, 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 grind, 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 hustle, 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 and then you're just like, okay, then where's my life? Yeah. What happened in my life? Where I can't. That's the thing with my startups, family, though. It's know? like it's right. so hard. At some point, it consumes consumes you to the point where it's, it is like your life, and it, I think that's really the the struggle of founders that have to, you know, find that. I don't want to call it a balance, but there's like a line and the rhythm. Yeah, work exactly. life rhythm. Yeah. Work life rhythm. There is a rhythm there. Yeah, my my rhythm is usually a fucking drum. You know, like a snare drum, just ta, 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 only on the business side and not taking care of myself. So I'm a, I am absolutely guilty as charged right. of that yeah. exact thing. But you burn out eventually. It, yeah. Well, you burn. You do burn out, and yeah. I have burned out so yeah. many of times. Yeah. Like I'll post an Instagram story at like 3 a.m. and like Nick would be the only person that <laughs> watches. I'm like, what's this guy doing yeah. up at 3 a.m.? He's probably working. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. And look, that's all I'm ever doing. And that's cool. And there's definitely there's definitely I do like it too. For it. Well, it, there's a time and place for it. Because it's like also, it's, it's not, your rhythm. It's what works for you. Yeah, it's not working on one thing, yeah. I think, which is important, right? It's like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to design this thing that mm-hmm. no one's going to see, at least for now. Maybe they'll see it in two years. I don't even know. I'm going to work on this idea that I have for a business I want to create in seven years from now and just do that at nighttime because it's intellectually stimulating and you're learning things and it's, it, and it's very fun. But where the danger is is when you're focused on only one thing yeah. mm-hmm. and then you do that for 18 hours and Stuff. it's really difficult and you don't have a team behind you or something like that that gets into danger land pretty quickly 100 percent. yeah yeah but it's, it's a it's a tough it's a tough balance you gotta you gotta make an effort you gotta you know, make a real effort a good <laughs> example we just on our i don't know when we're gonna release it I and mean, it might be released after this podcast as well but we just interviewed shelby and sandy who are uh really really well-known uh artists they're they're phenomenal artists and uh, in LA, and I feel like you would like them. I, I don't know. Yeah, you'd love them. They're like really into like nineties yeah. culture and like the nostalgia. Sick. Yeah, Ooh. they're really cool guys. Yeah. Uh, two brothers, and the older one, Shelby, was talking about how he has like a very young baby now, like a couple months maybe at most, maybe three months. And he was saying that so during the week they'll work very late hours some days, but he makes sure that two of those days he leaves work at five p.m. Yeah. Right. Other days he's there till one a.m., three a.m. And again, like they're starting up, they're hustlers, they're young, they're young guys. But like that's the rhythm. We talked about right. this with a couple of our guests. It's like there's no such thing as a work-life balance. Like no. you're sleeping ideally six to eight hours a day, so that's a third of your day. You're working probably eight to ten hours. That's another a little third plus of your day. The rest is like maybe your life, and you're not really doing much besides eating, talking to people, whatever. So it's not a balance. There is no ba- automatically. There is no balance. Right. Sixteen eight. There's no balance. So it's like how do you you know involve your life in your work or like in between your life in, or in between your work have life, right? And I think it's important because I've seen it firsthand. Interacting with people, going places makes me or gives me a more positive mindset of the world, which immediately impacts my work yeah but like in the, in your yeah. case like you're like a super extrovert yeah in, in other cases you know someone you know even just like being at home working on something other than what they're working on is a form of like 
balance, right? Like, oh, you know, it's all, even if it's con- if, even if it's work, it's just yeah, exactly. Yeah. What you said. Yeah, I like I put the extrovert fucking skin on my face, you yeah. know, and I can turn it on and like do all the things, and I like talking to people and stuff. But also, I kind of just need to like isolate myself for a few hours every day. Throw and just, on a few good songs and just know, work on yeah. cool shit. Turn on some Lil Xan. Yeah, now. That's some Gordon Ramsay. Shout out to Lil Xan. Well, shout out to Lil Xan. Yeah. Um, yeah Are you, know, you more extroverted or introverted? Um, I think at my core of core, I'm an introvert big time. Um, but also, I don't know. I feel like I'm an extroverted introvert, if that makes any sense, which it absolutely doesn't. It does. Um, it does, because that's how I am. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I yeah. think I think I, I think was talking to this about with, with my girlfriend's dad the other day. I've become more introverted as I've gotten older. I've gotten Weird. the I went the opposite way. Yeah. A lot of people go the opposite way. Um, but I was definitely more extroverted, and now I'm selectively extroverted. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, it's like with those that I really find interesting or want to be extroverted with, I am. Yeah. And other times it's like just like, I don't want to waste your time. We'll, we'll be somewhere oh, yeah. and he'll be like quiet as fuck. And I'm like, oh, he, he, uh, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I'll be like, and it's, and it's, it's not his vibe right now. Yeah, it's like sure. I'm, I'm, lis- like, I'm, I'm, listen- I'm listening and like I'll take it in. I don't have to say much. Like I'll communicate with my body. Yeah. But, and you'll know it's probably not good. But <laughs> if I get quiet, it's probably not a good sign. You know, like it's probably something's wrong and it's not my problem. Right. It's your problem. Uh, or I'm just not vibing with you. Right. And, and that's fine. It's normal to not vibe with others. And I think as you get older, you realize that. You don't have to get along with everybody. Everybody does, not, everybody does not have to like you. Everybody does not have to like your ideas. They don't have to like your energy. And I don't fucking care. Yeah, like that's it's exactly very, right. It's very simple. Like, I don't have the time to care about your feelings if it's negative. If it's mm-hmm. positive, then hell yeah, let's fucking do it. Yeah. But if it's not, then let's not waste each other's time. Not in the same way. There's like, there's follies in both being a 100% extrovert yeah. or 100% introvert, right? Like, yeah. when you're 100% extrovert, what you get your energy from is like talking to people, right? Yeah. And so by virtue of that, you're talking to a lot of people that maybe you don't vibe with, yeah. but you just have the feel, the need, the feeling, because it makes you feel good to go and, and talk to a bunch of people. Whereas an introvert, you know, it, it energizes them to be alone, and then therefore you're not interacting with enough people like you should be. Mm-hmm. And and either of those two things sort of have their sure. their pitfalls. And, and figuring out that rhythm or balance, I think, even you know, on a personal level mm-hmm. for people is, is something that you know I don't know if, if people talk a lot about this, um, but it's probably a struggle for a lot of folks. Yeah, and you could. If you've listened to like ten of our podcasts, you could tell the difference between different episodes, and it's harder because a lot, like ninety nine percent of the times, we don't know the person before we interview them. We've never got on a call, yeah. we've never texted, we've never emailed. At most, we've emailed like one time, and so we have sixty minutes or so to like get it going. But it, yeah, so, but I feel like on a personal level, it really starts with like self awareness, like knowing like how you like. I don't want to call it like labeling, but knowing what you like, what you are. And be accepting that, and then yeah. working towards like like if you're like on one side deep on the spectrum, you know how can you get a little bit closer to the middle so that way you kind of have best of both worlds. Yeah. Where if you're alone, you can still be productive and and find energy and inspiration to do the things you want to do, but then also get out there and 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 meet people and build real relationships with people as opposed to like surface level shit. Right. And see, for me, I've realized that like the thing about you know self awareness is a great point. I'm guilty of being the person who judges you before I meet you. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, like I start off not liking you. Yeah. Right? Automatically. I used to be like that, yeah. too. And then I start liking you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe. But it's going to take some time. Then I like, start liking you, maybe. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> My girlfriend knows this very well of me, and she doesn't really love it. But, like, because she's the person that will automatically, like, vibe mm. with you from the, like, the first second. Yeah. For me, I'm, like, a little wary of everyone. I just don't, tr- it's not, maybe it's a trust thing. But once I do like you, I mean, it's, you're gonna get thousand percent on me. Yeah. You're gonna get sick of me liking you. Yeah. Right. But in the beginning, I just I need a I need something from you. I need to like feel Dude, I'm you. A, I'm exactly like that. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely you know I'm all, I'm always skeptical yeah, and wary too. of every single human being. It's not good. It's not a great thing. It, it's not, but it's also a survival mechanism. It it, is. And, and at least for me, like where I grew up and and where I've yeah. lived, like there's a lot of people that do not have your best interests in mind. Right. You know, somebody comes up to you, you know, yeah. where where I've I've been living for the majority of my life, and you know, like hey man, nice shoes. 
That means they want your fucking shoes. Yeah. They're not giving you a compliment, right? Yeah. So like, if you just assume, you're like, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. It's compliment. usually followed up with, those would look great on my yeah. feet. Look like they're my size. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then that's how that goes. And, and it's unfortunate that that's the world we live in. Yeah. I mean, and I don't know what, I don't know if LA is specifically more so like that. Actually, I don't, I don't identify with that as much, but I, I kind of wish, I, and I feel like I've more and more became that way. Yeah. Um, I was always more like, I'm, I want to try to vibe with everybody. I mean, yeah. um, you know, as much as Which I can. Which is a good but, thing. But no, but then uh, on the flip side, like, there's a lot of letdowns. Like at some yeah. point, they're not vibing back, and you're like, well, yeah. "Fuck! I just gave all my energy." You're like, I'm "Yeah, gonna talk to you know, else now. the best." Yeah. What, I mean, my dad's taught me a lot of lessons, but one of the best things that he says all all the time to this day is, "Don't have expectations." Because as soon as you have expectations and someone or something doesn't meet them, you're going to be disappointed. Right. So if I expect that this is going to be a good podcast and it's not, I'm going to be disappointed. If I come in thinking, like, I don't know what's going to happen yeah. and it's amazing, I'm going to be like, hell yeah, it was amazing. Because I had no expectations. Yeah. And that's how I feel like now when I meet people. And that's why I don't want to have other people tell me about other people. Because then automatically I want to have an expectation of them. Negative or positive. Sometimes it's even worse when it's positive. Because I have a positive expectation of you and then you let me down. Now you're dead to me. And it's not, it's not good. And it's not fair to you. But that's that's how the world works. So I try to go into everything more so. I'm trying to be more intentional about it. To not be very to not be very judgy. Because as soon as I am, and whether it's positive or negative, it's going to impact the result. So whether it's you're starting a business. Whether you're meeting somebody for the first time. like Whether you're going out and dating somebody for the first time. Try to lower your, not lower your expectations, try not to have any expectations. Yeah. Go in and pretend it's a blank canvas, you're the artist, start art, start start arting, start yeah. painting, start drawing, whatever it is, right? Because that's the biggest thing, is like as soon as you expect something and it doesn't happen, it ruins you. And you're never going to come back and have a positive reaction for that. Yeah, you can so, set yourself up for failure really easy. And it's always yeah. good to have goals and, and think yeah. like, always think really, really big. But that's not expectation setting right so, that's that's mental exploration of allowing right. your brain to go to the biggest most right. badass thing no matter what it is that you're trying to do and be like yeah i could do that and i can no. see myself and visualize myself there but that's not saying oh and now the only expectation right the zero or one binary expectation is that i'm gonna be the shoe dog guy right. you know or and the I'm not fucking deal building anything along guy. The way. any challenges yeah. like it's just gonna be a perfect ride all the way to the end yeah it's like you know if you if you just if you take your expectation and you put it you know you have goals which is one thing right yeah. and expectations are something else so you Completely. expect to achieve your goals for sure but the go but your expectation and goals aren't the actual same thing the same. at all yeah so. and if you just have the expectation that you're going to work towards the goals you've achieved the goal exactly it's so much more achievable but if you expect that you are going to hit your goal and you don't hit your goal now you've not only failed on reaching the goal you've also failed on your expectations yeah so now your mindset the next time around you set a goal is gonna be like oh shit i should lower my goals lower my expectations so now you're hurting yourself that's right it's just that effect like i mean it's in the podcast world what how that looks like for pat and i is if we go to like a guest and they're like uh you know we have a hard stop in 35 minutes and we're like fuck you know we're really excited about having a conversation with you in 35 minutes is not going to be enough yeah. so now our expectation is automatically lowered and that podcast is not going to end up being that good of course not because we're gonna be like uh, we should rush this podcast to fit as much as we can in 35 <laughs> yeah. minutes and that, that, that happened once <laughs> yeah happened once. Real. since then we've been very cautious about it and yeah. always ask ahead of time yeah. but yeah. it happened Most recently. once um uh, and uh, no with Christopher Gavigan I know yeah yeah I don't want to name it but um, Brenna is real nice <laughs> was the person that gave me that expectation I don't give a fuck yeah uh, don't fucking yeah. Don't and, and, 35 minutes so he had a meeting and he fucking actually Brenna? 30 he's like we cut rough. the podcast short yeah and he goes he's having such a good time where he's like wait what are you, yeah. why are you guys cutting it short we're like we were told because you you're a PR like, person over here he's like oh no they could wait 30 minutes we're like <laughs> yeah oh, are you serious so he just yeah. hung out with us for 30 minutes we're yeah. like dude we could have done a podcast Anyways. He just had some minder. That yeah. was so we, we had him back on the show, which is yeah. Great. But but, but recently, we, so good. now we learned our lesson. And most recently, we had a podcast, and we emailed them like a follow up, and we're like, "Are we still on?" And they're like, "Oh well, yeah, but we have a hard stop at like seven p.m. Start time is like six thirty. We're like, we're gonna have to pass because like by the time we set up, do this, like it's not fair to us, and it's not fair to you. Yeah. Like we want to give you the time, and this is the platform for you to kind of talk about yourself. So and you learn. I mean, you learn from your lessons, and you just kind of move on. And I think we've done a good job at that. And We'll yeah. just keep on doing that. And you guys have had done yeah, hundred and what do you say? How many episodes you've done? Almost one twenty now. Yeah, one twenty. Yeah. 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 That's so, that's some point, that's well, a lot. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Given, given point, what we fucked up on. Yeah, well, I want to say, I want to say, we we yeah. started experimenting, yeah. and uh, <laughs> instead of doing one episode per founder, we did like four. So we kind of envisioned it as being like a kind of like a talk show, like with like for example, like Jimmy Fallon or something, where he has different segments. segments. So mm. it was kind of like 
you know, topical, you know, one, one was like kind of their background, one was topical, and then the other might have been like a game. So it was kind of like if you were CEO of this company and you were selling this random product we'd pick out of a, out of a hat, like mm. how would you go it's about it? It's a great it? game. You could play it was, that game right now. Let's that do it, fun. dude. Let's I'm do down. It. it was really Alrighty. fun, um, but we didn't see as much of a, like the excitement from the, the, the audience. Right. And we're always like listening and trying to get feedback. So uh, went back to the... To the one hour thing. My uh, favorite oh, sorry, one. Sorry, the one one episode thing. My favorite uh, one was uh, we were sitting down with Daniel Cassidy and we told him if he was the founder of, of Verizon selling furniture, <laughs> like that was a new product. <laughs> it was good. Another one was Nike selling flowers. Nike flowers. Nike flowers. So we've got to give one to Nick. we got to give one to Nick. That is oh, hilarious. Yeah, what are you doing? Okay, okay. And so the idea is you, you just sort of say what you would do if you were Nike trying to sell flowers, yeah. or something like that. the CEO of Nike, yeah. So yeah. Wow. We also need some of the CEO of Starbucks for a day. Um... Hmm, we gotta think of a good one. Do we keep it in the CPG space? Do we move on to something else? I don't know. Move on to whatever you want, Brian. Not scared. Tesla selling refrigerators. Ooh, Tesla, s- Tesla selling refrigerators. Well, first of all, <laughs> so bye bye Elon Musk. Elon Musk is no longer the chairman. Yeah, I'm sorry, Elon. Right mind, shout yeah. out to Elon. Love yeah. that guy. Yeah. Problem is with refrigerators is they got to be plugged in the goddamn wall. Obviously, do they? Now they do, but not anymore. Not anymore. Nope. Yeah, exactly. because we have a gigafactory and we're going to start making wireless refrigerators to put anywhere in your home. Wow. Why? Why only have a refrigerator in your kitchen? First of all, yeah. because yeah. you have to plug it into the wall and it's this giant big thing. But if you wanted to, and it was all bad. Battery powered, bro. No problem. Put it Plug in it in. Put it in your car. Put it next to your bed. I want a refrigerator in my car. You know? I don't know why that's not a thing. I'm saying. What about operationally? Like, would it be the same thing? Like, fun- functionally? Well, well, you already have the manufacturing facility, right? So you're probably making a decent amount of the parts in China, um, you know, depending on the tariffs, etc. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the batteries are being made domestically, likely. So then you're making those things probably in Hawthorne. I would just make, you know, you've got like mm-hmm. a little back shed down yeah. there in Hawthorne, yeah. just uh, pumping yeah. out some e- Elon always likes to put like random funny shit, you know, in, it's, oh, you know, in the software. What would you do with a f- fridge? Yeah, you have to have a bunch of Easter eggs, for yeah. sure. And, and by the way, the entire <laughs> front of the fridge Fridge, I think is you, you can see through the entire front of the fridge yeah. and it's just a giant iPad basically right I love it yeah and then does it know, vent for you or no oh dude you got a vending machine on this thing like you, you know it's 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 all glass so it almost looks like a beautiful picture if you want to put one on there you can yeah. set screensavers on mm-hmm. it and you can put you know some you can put yeah. some Halloween shit on there you if you have want to open to. it I mean you can I mean, just you like should, stock yeah. it but then like on a the screen maybe you can yeah, even just, just put it. what you want and just brings it what out which is how it should be but like you know you I mean jokes aside like I feel like refrigerators have no not been like no. revolutionized yeah. and, and, and it's massive that, it's going to track every single thing that you have yeah. in your fridge sync with an app on your phone tell you exactly how much milk you have or whatever it is yeah. cheese and etc yeah. and it's be like sending you a push notification oh hey just let you know you're, you're running, running out of milk for the kids and yeah. we put it on your shopping you know, I'll list give, I'll, I'll give a shout out to a good friend of ours Giovanni who works at KTLA he had this idea and I think it was called Pantry or something like that yeah. and it was going to be every time you buy an item or whatever it's going to sync to your phone you're going to put it in your fridge it's going to tell you the expiration date all those things I think there's a lot of like issues with it operationally like the Q, like the code and all that stuff yeah you got to get manufacturers to buy yeah, it it's on, a little fucked up but like it's a good I mean, idea. Amazon's doing it with their I, I know they're yeah, like fresh, a little bit more organized there but whatever it's called hey, are they I don't doubt it yeah, who's I mean, your favorite founder my favorite one mm, my favorite one well I'll have to preface this okay. by saying that yeah. I don't really listen to like like no, not our podcast no no, no yeah. yeah but like I don't listen I listen to your fucking podcast guys yeah, yeah. How, how dare you I mean yeah, I listen to your yeah, podcast yeah, you know what I don't listen to how I built this oh. yeah it's too corporate yeah shout yeah. out to the founder hour yeah, yeah. way better podcast you're that guy way you're that guy podcast. hey hey I, you know, I don't, I don't love that kind of format, so I don't really listen. Yeah. I don't really like yeah. follow other founders of stuff, yeah. generally speaking. Yeah. Um, so, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm probably a bad person to ask, but if I had to pick one, it'd be Elon 100%. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. For what reasons? For a litany of reasons, I think I think I identify with him on a lot of different levels, right? Like, my mind likes to grow and expand beyond a whole bunch of different things, right? Like, whether it's tech or CPG or this or that or, or clothing, etc. Like, I like to create just whatever I want, and that's pretty much what he does. And he also just says, fuck yourself if you don't like it, right? Yeah. Like, he's, he's started out with PayPal. He's made a goddamn electric car company. It's a boring company. That's he, all I, that's he all started digging holes in the ground in LA because <laughs> he's like, why not? It's fun. Yeah. Sending ships to 
to Mars. Yeah. 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 Building, like, you know, so he just kind of does whatever he wants, and he's very yeah. unapologetic about doing it and does it in a very smart and scalable way. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that if you look at all of the other founders, t- take Zucks, take any of these other guys, none of them are that prolific. Yeah. And they're like, not. And none like, of them and are that the reason, prolific. I, I don't know what reasons you don't like how I build this, but the reasons why I maybe don't want to listen to it as much um, is, is because it's so focused on people that have had this like major success already yeah and at some point like things with elon like i'm sure he would i'm sure if you asked him he wouldn't consider himself successful but a lot of people would and this guy's all these like wild crazy ideas and whether or not he fails like the guy's like really shooting for the stars he made a goddamn not a flamethrower yeah for fun (laughs) that's just funny dude that's just like that thing ever i'm just pissed off i wasn't able to get the hat I know. It's dope. So sad about the hat too. Yeah. It's sick. Like somebody should remake it and sell it. You probably make another one. Like newsletter for this? I should have been on that freaking newsletter. I don't. It's his Twitter account. Yeah, it's his it's Twitter his account. Like, here's like here's a flamethrower that you shouldn't buy. Yeah. <laughs> Sold out. He also has the time to go on Twitter and like have these like really like weed, witty like replies and like tweets and it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. For Do you like think you. that future founders will be more like? The Elons of the world, or will they be more like the Bill Gates, Zucks of the world? I think they'll be more like Bill Gates and Zucks. I think Elon is an extreme outlier, um, you know, a- across time and space and history. I, I don't, th- I don't see anyone in the past really. There's, there's some exceptions, but there's just not that many people that have been that prolific and able to be, you know, very accepting of risk mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. saying, I don't even care. I'm just going to jump into a completely different ancillary, unrelated category of whatever business. It is and just do it because I want to do it and have the passion for it. Um, Generally speaking, I think humans don't act that way like yeah. broadly mm-hmm. and I think there's a lot of corporate pressures not to do that you know Because and you see Elon in the news all the time and what is the number one thing oh well you know you, 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 Tesla this and that and all he's tweeting fucking memes of Harambe or he's you know he's yeah. just doing all this stuff yeah. and, and so there's cor- there's certain corporate pressures that most people are going to just get in line um, and sort of just abide by whatever the board and the mm-hmm. shareholders and Bloomberg or whoever yeah. Market Watch says because that's a safe thing to do yeah, yeah it's a I mean, something like Bill Gates like had to go start a separate like project foundation to like do other projects he wasn't doing through yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I wish more people would be like that, but I think his mind just works in a fundamentally different way than than the your guy, average the man's a genius. The founder. Man's, the man's nuts. Yeah, but I mean, all of those guys that we need, He's an like, insane genius. they definitely have something yeah. special. Like, I think, I think also success brings that a little bit. I think that. Had Elon not been successful with PayPal and all those other things, he wouldn't be the Elon he is right now. That definitely plays a part in it. Uh, because I'm sure he started off as, like, one of us. Like, just, you know, a crazy thinker, like, doer and just active dude. And found success and is like, I can do this again. And probably be a little bit more crazy. And people are going to listen to me because I am successful. And and that works out. But, like, right now, if Pat and I were crazy like that, people are going to be, like, go to a hospital. Right? <laughs> like... We're not, they're not going to be like, these guys are geniuses. So I think that plays, timing plays a role in that stuff, you know, obviously prior yeah, success. Shout out Elon. He was my, uh, yeah, he was my uh, uh, commencement speaker. Oh, no way. Um, One of the worst speeches. The worst speech I've ever Probably, yeah. Life. It's I mean, unreal. I'm not surprised no, by no, that like at all. The, like, would, the worst. <laughs> the worst. Like, I don't <laughs> even want to repeat what he said. You can find it on YouTube. But He uh, said if you work 80 hours a week and no. somebody else works 40 hours. He said if you, if you work twice as hard as the next person, mm-hmm. he'll get twice as much done as them. Well, I mean, first of all, I don't know yeah. if that's true. Second of all, it's not true. I, 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 mm, I it's definitely just ex- more though. Yeah, not, more. yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was weird, but um, <laughs> it was like what six minutes. Yeah, he six just like, literally came on stage and then got on a plane. And, like, yeah. Left. Well, and that's the thing too. He's not one of those guys like like some people like to get in front of people on a stage and then do this sort of you know it's almost yeah. like a show kind of thing yeah. you know and you see yeah. people do it but but Elon's like not wanting to go do no. that yeah. you know you can he tell wants you to build want to really he wants to build cars and <laughs> yeah. like fucking dig tunnels under houses and shit to <laughs> fucking put magnets and f- vacuum systems yeah. to fly cars a million miles an hour yeah. yeah anything else is just like not ideal yeah, yeah. <laughs> also something that i just wanted to say like that's related unrelated to like this founder topic is that i think that one thing that uh was a challenge for pat and i early on with the podcast was sitting down with female founders right and for multiple reasons number one there aren't as many as there are male founders and two, the male founders would introduce us to other male founders. But the one thing that I've found personally is that I had I love the conversation with our female founders. I mean, like some of the best, like Ashley Merrill from Lunia, who is 
Mark Merrill's wife. Mark Merrill is the founder of League of Legends, Epic, no, Riot Games. Riot Games. Mm-hmm. Um, He's also the co-creator of League of Legends. Yeah, yeah. Wow. one of my favorite podcasts that we've done because it gave us a different perspective that we didn't get before. And I think that's something that should be talked about more is like showcasing and highlighting these female founders because they bring something that we haven't heard of usually. A lot of them you don't see on television or on podcasts or on shows or whatever it may be. It's also for way harder reason. for them as founders, I think, mainly because, you know, if they want to be mothers and they have to yeah. take care of their kids. Like, yeah. I think Ashley, like, was saying she literally, like, launched her business while she was she, like, birth, like, on her birth. on her Jesus. Yeah. She was giving birth. So, like, that's something that I think <laughs> that, that you know, insane. Pat and I have just tried to focus on a little bit more, like, this last year is sitting down with female founders, not because they're female, but because it gave us an interesting perspective on business because they have less time usually mm-hmm. than men. Like they are mm-hmm. mothers, wives, like caretakers, the cooks in the family, right? That's why there's less of them, of course. There's, yeah. there's yeah. less of them. It, it's that's, harder that's for why. Right? And the bigger challenge was it was hard for us to book them on the show because they're either working or at home. And they're not they don't have that extra time to do a podcast. Whereas, you know, if a man for some reason can take a little bit more time away from his family, which again I don't necessarily agree with, but that's just what it is. Well like, the difference is he truth. doesn't have to feed a human with his right. body. Right. right, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. Very big difference. That's, like, exactly. that's yeah. the, that is the big difference. Exactly. Right. But I do think that uh, you know, as men, I think in the founder leader space, like I think we should be more encouraging of women starting up companies and businesses or whatever, because they are very good at it like they are very good at certain things that we're not good at and i think they bring a different perspective to the business to the company to the movement nonprofit, whatever it may be and i think that it should be part of our responsibility to showcase that because we recognize that as a problem and we should be the ones that are trying to solve it alongside them um and uh, that's just something that i wanted to say because we talk yeah. so much about founders and like we highlight elon and all those stuff but there's a lot of amazing female founders i think the bumble founder whose name is whitney uh, whitney, wolf. whitney wolf yeah is a fantastic person to like follow and listen to or like these female venture capitalists that i follow on twitter these people th- these folks are like doing things that other males aren't necessarily doing mm. and i think it's interesting as a male to follow them as well it's funny like yeah i've had a, a lot of girls on this show yeah. and ha- have several more books but like I've, I've never had that thought process like yeah. i don't like i don't really give a shit if you yeah. you know have yeah, a yeah, penis or a vagina or yeah. if you are you know doing one or the other or okay. both or you're doing the gender yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever the yeah, fuck same, same. um you know because i just don't care i just don't care but i think again having a lot of different perspective is absolutely necessary to anything you do in your life. Oh, absolutely. And I think some people do not want to go seek that. I think you need to be proactive about it. Well, or else it's, it's not going to yeah. come to you. It's just so easy to sit in your own bubble and feel yeah, comfortable about stuff. About it, people do it all the time. On, on, on your pod, when we when we had you on the podcast, the whole like exposure thing, if you remember that. Yeah. And I love that topic. Yeah. I always love it because I always bring it up because it's so important because depending on where you grew up and what you grew up around, whether it was you know the stuff you consumed or who was, who was around you, whether it's your parents, your friends, your society, um, if you're not exposed to certain things, you just never know whether or not you'll be good at it. You might be the best in the world at something, but because of where you grew up and the circumstances that you grew up with, um, you just never know until you you somehow eventually maybe come across that and right. holy shit, that's a holy shit moment. So it's really like whether it's through media, whether it's through like content or um, education or whatever it might be, just trying to allow that access to as many people as possible to be able to consume like the reason I, we love podcasts, it's free to consume. Like you have no reason not to. Uh, it's literally just your time, and it's a passive thing that you can just throw on while you're doing something else, like exercising. Yeah. And just get this like full breadth of knowledge in a certain topic or whatever it might be. Or like just hear someone's story and and identify with it and, and apply to your life that you wouldn't have otherwise had because maybe you don't have money to take a class in that topic. Maybe like no one in your family is an entrepreneur. No one in your family has started a business before. Like. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. I, you know, I was thinking about that the other day when I was listening to a podcast, and it was um, it was a podcast that, that Jocko was doing. He's talking to this Vietnam vet. He was the last seal in the Vietnam War and all stuff. It's a really, really fascinating podcast. And and I'm walking, and I listen. I've been listening to podcasts forever. You know, probably 2011 mm-hmm. is when I really started listening to them a lot. And I'm walking down the street, and I'm just like, I can't believe this is free. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so grateful for right? this content to be for free. Like I would never hear the perspective of a Vietnam vet as a seal like going in a boat and almost getting murked so many times like 
there's just unless and, National Geographic or someone did like a not, right. like or the History Channel. Sorry, the History Channel did a documentary on it. Right, you would never heard about it. Yeah, that's right. And then you're having a narrator kind of tell you, you know. But what you guys do is, it's like you can actually just talk to the human. Mm-hmm. Like that's so such a simple. special and cool thing, and it's just it really so is. simple. And like, you don't have to have a podcast to do that. I think that's another lesson you can learn from us is like, reach out to people. Like, you know, like I've, Pat and I talk about this all the time. Like, anytime I'm feeling down, like the best solution for me is like hitting up people. Like, whether it's our guests, our other friends, or whatever it may be, just to like see or talk to a human being, like completely changes my mood immediately. And so when somebody tells me like, you know, I'm feeling down, I don't know what to do. I'm like, go talk to somebody. Go, like see what see what they're up to right. and that might give you some inspiration some like motivation or whatever and it usually does because you want to so hear true. other people's struggles or challenges or successes or whatever and automatically you're like oh wait like I'm fine everything's okay it's so true you man. know like everyone has those bad days like everyone's gonna figure it out so that's like my medicine is like people for other people it's like getting away from people is their medicine but <laughs> yeah. again like hearing just seek perspective is, right and yeah. that's one way of that's getting perspective is, yeah. is talking to someone else yeah. and realizing like that person's problems are probably worse than yours yeah, yeah. and at the end of the day realizing that they're just human beings whether they're famous or not they're at, at like the elemental level as soon as they sit down with you their egos aside and if they, if they have an ego you're gonna shut it down real quick because what are you gonna do? Faking in front of me for the next thirty minutes? Like, <laughs> Good luck. Like, yeah, I mean, like you're gonna eventually come down to like reality, and so that's like the beautiful point of like podcasting is like they're just themselves. Like when you're interviewing somebody, or like even now, right? Like yeah. we're all in our own element, like together, like having this conversation, talking, discussing about random stuff. But that's how it is, even like on a non-podcast level. If you're with a human being, and that's kind of like the thing that I'm like pretty bullish on is that they're gonna be companies and stuff, ideally and hopefully, that bring back human touch. You know, like all these apps and whatever, they're great. But when you remove human touch, you create all these other new problems. And so there needs to be some sort of way that even like Tinder is now live. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm not that creative Mm -hmm. yet. But if we can bring that back where you're like sitting face to face with a human being, that's going to change everything up again. Like all the mental health issues that are, you know, they're not all of them, but like a good amount are resolved through human connection and human touch and human feeling and emotion. We got to bring that back. Yeah, I mean that's that's my that's my prediction is like that needs to come back. That's actually that's my hope. That's really interesting. That's actually kind of goes back to the conversation we were having before about like what's kind of taboo now that won't be in the future that has a market viability. Like it's a great example, actually, right? Like yeah. the mental health and, and connecting human yeah. beings and using technology instead of being this barrier that you put your face you know behind yeah. and then just look at shit. It. You're using it to actually encourage human interaction right. and, and touch in a meaningful way. Like it's this is technology. Like where this microphone's technology, this computer's technology, True. but we're still facing to face so i think it should be technology as the as a driver as a supplement right yeah. as opposed yeah. to the thing that is actually connecting you right if it's i don't know if it's a phone and you can be tindering in person i don't know how it's going to look like yeah. but if you can bring those humans together to like create a project or design together or draw to get whatever it is right if you can use technology in that interaction i think that's going to be epic it's gonna be epic i got a great idea for this exact thought it's called we work I don't know if you've ever heard of it. <laughs> no. It's where, you, what is, it's what where a bunch of people do? that don't know each other share a space. And yeah. work. You know what? I'll, I'll give... I'll do give, you own your real estate or do you just lease it out? Well, you know, it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'll, give, I'll give WeWork credit. Their idea is phenomenal. The execution of it, like the fact that they're subleasing the, the space and they don't actually own it, was bad like Mc- they're not McDonald's that's yeah. all I'm saying yeah. McDonald's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a beautiful business yeah I mean like see but like again the places like McDonald's can become the WeWork sure right Starbucks can become WeWork all these places Whole Foods Amazon can become WeWork like yeah. they have the space if you own the space you can create those connections and that's like the community aspect of things and that's what it's going to become that's that's what's going to happen in the next even probably two years like because we were like fell out of its grace right now like so quickly the opportunity to actually do that if your other companies that already exist and have clients and customers is, is so easy right. it's so easy if you have their information bring them to your space well, this is a weird dichotomy, right? Where technology is doing two simultaneous things. It's like allowing people to connect more yeah. at scale across the world and also putting a physical... Also disconnect. Yeah, and yeah. physical and digital barrier in front of two, three, ten, hundred people yeah. in front of them. Like when you go to a concert now, right? Yeah. You ever see what that looks like? Yeah. Everybody's just got their phone out, putting it on Snapchat or whatever. They're well, not... Pornhub. Yeah, yeah, Pornhub's new uh, <laughs> or Snapchat porn, by Pornhub. Yeah. Snap porn, Snapchat brought to you by Pornhub. Yeah, you know it's it's interesting. Like, 
th- there's there's this weird this sort of like tug of war going on and then when you think of AI and robotics you know in, in some senses AI is supposed to make things more relevant to you and, and have like a robot talking to you as if it's a person and, and so it may even give you the feeling of sort of like this connection but it's actually just software mm. and then as soon as we have a Starbucks barista that's actually like you know Tecton 940B Beta 7 <laughs> and just and just, just, just you know R2D2 is back there fucking making you a cappuccino yeah. or whatever like, well it might be more consistent that's for sure. yeah that's true yeah. Well, I thought you were saying that's at true. some point the barista is a human being sounds like that because you don't even know what a human being sounds like yeah, you know? yeah. Like, exactly you, suck. you don't even exactly. know yeah, yeah. You just, it's you know. pretty crazy man when you really think about it like um, all the things that are bringing us closer are also taking us further apart mm-hmm. and it's like really it's kind of like now it's like up to it's like up to the human being on a micro and macro level like as a society and as an individual to like like recognize that and catch yourself and be, again going back to the self awareness piece like know when you're going too deep into that where it's like yeah. holy shit yeah. but think about it most of the things that human beings enjoy involve like live experiences and being with other people like you would rather eat with somebody else than alone right you'd rather go to the movies with somebody else than alone you would rather go to the beach with somebody else than alone like you're always looking for those experiences because that's the, that's really kind of what fulfills you right like and you talk about things like the gaming industry right like it's very easy to sit behind the tv yeah. and just play well but to take that further um yeah. I think that's one side of it. I think a lot of people would go to want to go to the movie alone, would want to eat alone, just for again going back to the yeah, extra yeah, yeah. thing. But I think um, how that how that plays a part in their life is like at some point you don't even know yourself anymore because you're you you have this kind of facade or or this type of character you want to be online mm-hmm. to the outer world where you kind of don't even think about like who am I really? You are your avatar. Exactly. Yeah, you are the cosplay. Yeah. yeah. So even when you're alone, it's like oh shit like I don't even know how to be alone anymore like I'm always like on Instagram just like scrolling through the feed yeah. so right because that's actually not being alone that's an interesting point like mm-hmm. being on an Instagram feed you're not actually you're alone not. you're not at all at yeah all. you're around like whoever's posting stories or yeah, and whatever. if you're on Amazon Alexa you're definitely not alone because <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, get you snitching on you to the oh, to the feds, bro. There, there was one day Pat was <laughs> just, just get stitches. Yeah, Pat right, was hanging out, out and he coughed. He coughed, coughed. No. Ten minutes after, I got a Hall's fucking ad. Amazon ad? No. Uh, it's on Instagram. Instagram. Oh, don't get me started with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, or, and then after that, Nick, I was like, Nick. I woke up sick. Okay, I literally woke up sick. I went on Instagram. Emergency. Was it flu season? No. No. Or other people that you know sick? Himself. I don't know, dude. I just oh, had saying. not talked about sickness. I just woke up. I felt a sore throat. I go on Instagram and it's an emergency. Yeah. Is your phone reading your mind? Perhaps. It probably Maybe. is. Probably the palm reader, bro. Perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's in my hand. It's feeling my pulse or something. It's pretty shit. badass, though, honestly. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I was hunting oh, oh, here's the. Here's oh, the oh, sorry. I was like to, that. Here's, oh, yeah. here's a That's crazy okay, one. Yeah. Uh, my mom went to the store. Random, you know, tangent. Uh, I liked. I apparently liked, I don't remember liking, but I apparently liked sardines when I was a kid. When my mom Ew, would make it. I know, right? Like sardines? Love I don't like, like it, it anymore. It. Uh, <laughs> but I guess I did. And so my mom goes to the store and she hasn't like bought a can of sardines in like forever and she buys one and she puts it on the table. She's like taking all the groceries out and she goes like, oh, look what I got. Remember these? Like she did, does not mention fish, sardines and nothing. I distinctly remember. And I go on Instagram and I see a canned fish ad. And that's not something you see that often. Canned fish. Oh, I'm about ad. to see it now because you keep fucking talking about it. You said it ten canned times. Canned fish. Bro. Like so there's I, no there's I gotta no say. This is a very popular conspiracy theory. Yeah. That your phone is listening to you and serving you ads on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I do not doubt it whatsoever. It's not real. Really? I'm here to tell you it's not real. Then what then what is it? Okay, so here's what my prediction there's is. Some, there's Hold some on, technological on. problems with that theory okay. so so you guys do podcasts right you see your yeah. file size every time you record yeah. audio um, and so you know if it's a wave file it's really big and then you compress it and mp3 is a little bit smaller but still mm. a big file even compared to like a photo or, or certainly written text something like that so then you can imagine 24 7 your battery is on taking in that information that audio information storing it on a server cataloging it transcribing it and then putting it into some sort of algorithm that then connects through API to a Facebook, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? So mm-hmm. you would you'd a have to assume that one that they have unlimited data storage because just the data cost alone to record everybody's audio on their phones all the time, absolutely insane, right? And then secondly, you'd have to assume that Apple or Samsung or whoever has a yeah. sweetheart deal on the back end API giving data or selling it to Facebook in real time, right. To serve you the ads. Well, you do allow your microphone on Instagram and Facebook, don't you? 
when you're using the app, yeah. Yeah, when you're using it. That, no, that that's that makes total sense. Yeah. Like, where are they gonna store that shit? But like, yeah. I always yeah. thought, I always thought like, oh, it's Facebook and Instagram. Because like, okay, look, anyone who's launched an ad on Facebook knows that you can't put like those keywords in there to say like if someone says or you know it's not usually yeah. a keyword thing it's like interests and behaviors yeah. and things like that so but i thought it was like something on facebook on the back end was doing to increase the success rate of the advertisers because they weren't able to get it organically or not organically but through pay, like regular paid ads and it was like some fishy thing going on oh yeah i mean there's a no, no pun intended, there's a really yeah. good tech crunch <laughs> article about it and, and yeah. this guy's way more technical than i am but he explains in detail how it's basically just impossible to do yeah like even the data that would get sucked out of your data plan on your cell phone right you'd yeah. just be fucked no yeah well, what are the odds i just got an aston martin ad uh well, i don't think we're talking about yeah, aston we're martin talking about though. tesla i mean <laughs> this is part of the problem bro i yeah. mean but the canned fish thing i just i still can't canned grab fish. my head I, I do eat why would i get oysters? a canned fish? i do not eat any fish like like the canned fish yeah. so here's here's canned here's fish. one thing i've heard might, this might be another yeah, yeah. fake theory that you're gonna debunk for me um <laughs> Is that you, when you purchase something like with a credit card, that credit card account is tied to an email, right? Yeah. That email perhaps is also used for Instagram. So let's say Pat buys something using his email, which I won't give because he doesn't want to get blown up by our emails, folks. <laughs> um, if he buys something and because him and I are close friends, like we interact and engage a lot on Instagram, mm -hmm. chances are I will get an ad for something similar or the same thing that he purchased. So I've also heard that. That he purchased. That he purchased. I might get an ad for it because his credit card company is tied to his email. His email is tied to his Instagram account. So there's some sort of fucking magic happening there. Then I get it served an ad as a close mm -hmm. friend or connection of his based on the product he's purchased using said payment system that's tied to his email. Yeah, so it's, you're not that far off actually with how it works. It's not as like one-to-one -one correlated yeah. like that, but um, certainly any of your credit card data, that is data that is bought and sold to all kinds of companies. And if you look at Cambridge Analytica and that mm -hmm. whole scandal with Facebook, that was a big problem. Mm -hmm. and, and even now, like you used to be able to, to target people who shop at Whole Foods. And yeah. how do they know that? Because they're buying credit card data from these providers that buy it from Whole Foods. <clears throat> Whole Foods makes profit on that, the whole thing, right? And so they definitely know. There's multiple, multiple companies, Google, Facebook, the rest of them that have your credit card data for sure. And yeah. then what they'll do is they'll take a complex set of behaviors behaviors like, you know, if you are also interested in the same things that he is interested in, you know, whether it's canned sardines or Aston Martins or whatever it is, they're going to build a profile based on that. And if you reach a certain sort of uh, similarity threshold, yeah. then you will be a lookalike audience right. of, exactly. of him, essentially. Right, yeah, right. you'll be considered right. in the same pool. Facebook people. created that, right? Lookalike audiences? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, probably. Uh, how nuts yeah, is we that? We were talking about this. Yeah. Is so genius. How nuts is that? I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, and we were like, who yeah, else can even true. do that? Because no one else has that many. I mean, yeah, there's like other platforms like Twitter and, and LinkedIn and stuff who have that many users, but like not very many. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant model if you think about, oh, hey, we're going to have all these pages of stuff and then we're just going to encourage people to like it. And then, whoop, gotcha, mm -hmm. bitch. Yeah. And now we can yeah. sell uh, yeah. ads to people. To, At the end of the day, I, I, you know, obviously a lot of people say like, would you rather get ads that are not relevant or relevant? Cause you're going to get ads anyway. Mm. But there, there is that piece of like, holy shit. They know a lot about. I don't, it. I like ads. Yeah. I like ads. Like, yeah. I mean, like I think Instagram has done a decent job of not being super annoying. Like, and they made it like, you know, it's native to the app and a lot of times like they're relevant and other times when they're not, I just press it's not relevant. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but I learn a lot about the, you know, products and a, a lot about different services or whatever, or how people are advertising. And as somebody who's like in that space or marketing or whatever, I, I use it as like research almost mm -hmm. of like what's working, what's not working. Like, is, am I actually like inclined to press learn more? And then am I, am I allow, you know, engaging with the landing page? How is that landing page? I'm looking at it more from that angle. So I'm not really getting annoyed by it. And I think most people aren't getting annoyed by it. They just want to say they're annoyed by it because they want to say that they're annoyed by something. And so it's just, it's just, you know, bullshit conversation, but it's really not that annoying. Honestly, you know? depends on, yeah. Like, I don't know. It depends on the platform. Yeah. You know, yes. of course, but yeah. Instagram, Instagram, at least for me, job. I've clicked on so many ads yeah, on Instagram and products. even bot stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, but when it's disruptive, like to the experience, yeah, and like a really Facebook bad is like, kind like of like sound. Like I like I mm. love SoundCloud, and I know they have to advertise like to stay stay alive. Yeah, but man, like sometimes you're just like listening what to a song. Okay, what, what about like a furniture advertisement? When were we talking about furniture? When I talked about Verizon furniture. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. Here we go. What do you mean? That's nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. And we talked about feathers, like the peacock feather. 
<laughs> so it got feather and furniture and oh, made for the fucking no. feather furniture. So here's the thing. <laughs> how many? Th- it's how like many, confirmation bias. I mean, how, yeah, I mean, how many words do you say per minute? Me, probably like 3,000. <laughs> 3,000 words a minute. <laughs> right. So you're talking and get rid of all, get rid of all the thes and the ats and the bees and the ands and the, all those types of words, right? Take those out. You probably got a bunch of nouns in there. And so like... What percentage of those nouns are you being served ads on? Probably less than 1%. Yeah. Probably less than 10, one tenth. It's, it's, it's just, it's really, I, I don't think we'll ever know, but but your theory makes a lot of sense in terms of just capacity. Like how, where the fuck is all this, all this being It'd stored? Be very very expensive. That's a great opportunity though. It'd be yeah. Very expensive. If you can find like a server that can insta compress, I'm sure Amazon's probably doing this. But like <laughs> if, if, if they can actually do that though, Massive opportunity. Massive yeah. opportunity. I mean, like, I think it's going to happen eventually. And it's, I'm re- Amazon Alexa is in some way doing it. Well, I guess, I, I can't remember if this is, um, I think it's Apple that's doing this, or Google had done it, and now Apple's doing it with their podcast, but they're actually listening to the podcast, transcribing, transcribing it. it. Yeah, and then when you search for whatever it is on... That's going to be big. That's going to be big. That's going to come Discovery. Up. Discovery yeah. is it's very hard. huge. Like, right now, we talked about, like, 30 topics right now, but, but if you Google... You know, Verizon, we're not going to come up, right? Like, I don't, if you think, I, don't think should, I don't think we should. Come I think up. we should come up. <laughs> I've said it now seven times. Verizon furniture, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if they steal that idea, I'm going to be very upset about it. Um, fucking Verizon, just stealing my ideas. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, discovery piece is very, very big. Whether it's podcast, well, any content in general. Yeah. Like, discoverability is, like, not that great right now. And, like, so for anybody that's listening, this is sort of wondering, like, you know, uh, I want to be, you know, how do podcasts work or how do I make a podcast and make it successful? Like, what have been the keys to the success of the Founder Hour? Ooh, um, I think Pat and I are good friends. You know, obviously, first, like, that's the most important thing. Um, and so if you're going to do it with somebody else, like, make sure you're good friends. Uh, consistency. Yeah, the doing it with someone else is obviously a big thing because it's like you hold each other accountable and it's like a fun project you work with other people on. But even if you're doing it yourself, like... It really has to start with like, do you are you even passionate about the subject? Like, is this something that you can see yourself doing for a while? Are you just trying to, you know, get your name out there and you know, like, for ulterior? You have, do you have ulterior motives, or are you are you really trying to whatever it might be, like, soak in a topic or uh, just have deep conversations with cool people? Um, you you have to be able to sustain it because it's not there isn't like money to be made in this thing there isn't Hmm. um unless you're joe rogan like good luck um there it's not a it's not a get rich quick scheme um in many ways it's a great way to meet people and just have cool conversations and if that's what you're into then and and you have a decent amount of knowledge in something or at least an interest in in something go for it um we always say like you know there's so many podcasts out there like if you're going to start one and you want to, and, and what are your metrics for success? Like you, you, I'll tell you right now, you don't know how many subscribers you have as a podcaster. I don't know who my, who my subscribers are. Um, you know, if I, if it wasn't for Instagram and the community we're trying to build there, we wouldn't know. And so there isn't much now, hopefully down the road there will, there will be, but, um, mainly it's, it's, are you interested in it? And then you have to just really be like relentless with, the whole approach like whether if you're getting trying to get guests on your podcast like you have to stay on top of that you know following up dealing with pr teams that kind of stuff i hate um, pr teams yeah. uh, i got blacklisted from pr <laughs> yeah we got i mean i lost it bro like these motherfuckers like let, <laughs> they, they like let it, they like let us on for like months and then they're like yeah you know what did, what did she say it was like after months and months of back and forth and them saying like oh we're gonna book this book it was a big it was a big guest um yeah they just gave us some like boilerplate response saying like what? we're not interested interested right now like we'll for sure like reach out in the future if there's any interest and we just lost it. and i was like cool. i literally responded i was like thanks for that boilerplate response like whatever like just destroyed them yeah and i mean i felt just like destroyed them i felt like a like a scintilla bad after um but i didn't because i was just like why'd you waste my time yeah. like if you're gonna say if you're gonna say no to us just say no right i'm very down with a no because at least i have an answer but if you're gonna give me like, oh, you know, they'll be available soon. It's like I don't know yeah. the fuck that means. You know, right. like, like soon might be three iPhone generations from now, and like I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to wait. I don't want to follow up. Yeah, mm-hmm. going back to your question, um, I know Gary Vee says it all the time. Like, focus on like the content and the quality isn't as important. But then he always like says like it is <laughs> equally important, and I think it is equally important. Like, um, you know, try to make sure that you're using decent like microphones because the person on the other side like you want them to have a good experience right um you know um and there are like very affordable microphones out there that have very clean sound um and then like 
go online and on YouTube and figure out how to like edit sound and make it sound nice. So that way the person's ears aren't bleeding, even though the content is great. At some point, they're just going to be like, um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to listen. And yeah. just to add on one more thing, I think for us, there's different types of podcasts, right? There's the podcasts like the ones that both of us do is like conversations, interviews, sit downs. There's scripted stuff. There's more like, you know, story based stuff. There's one that you told me about that two girls, one ghost, mm -hmm. um, you know, more like, yeah, I mean, they're massive podcasts presently. Um, I've That's a good friend, a good never friend of mine. Them. Never listened to Funny name. Yeah. yeah, very funny name. Um, there's other ones like serial that are like mystery based, whatever. Like there's different genres, obviously. So pick that lane, right? Like it's like a business. Like it's, it's the same advice you're gonna get for a business. Like if you like, I know there's like a Game of Thrones one or whatever it may be. So pick something that you really enjoy that you think others might even enjoy, and then just like figure out what the format is. If it's conversation, stick through that. Don't do a conversation one day, then do a scripted one day. Like, make sure your audience knows what they can expect. Again, it comes back down to expectations. Like, we know that we're going to release every Monday. You know, if we don't release every Monday, we get texts like, what happened, right? <laughs> and so, it, it hasn't happened much, but it has happened a couple of times and we just took like a couple week break. Um, but, be, I think consistency with anything is like key. And if you're, if you're consistent, even if it's like you have a bad podcast one day, like no one's going to be That's like, oh fine. man, like what did you do, man? Like you really fucked it up. Just, just move on. Just do it again. Like do something else. Yeah. And the cool thing about podcasts is they're going to be here forever. Like they're going to stay. So if you never listen to Nick Inger Ingersoll's podcast, episode six, you can now listen. <laughs> it's not go. like a TV show that I'm going to wait for it to be on Netflix. Right. You can literally go Google Nick Ingersoll and the founder hour and you're going to find it. And so... You guys should do that. Yeah, um, it was great. It was a great conversation. You should definitely listen to the Founder Hour. You guys, uh, you can do an email marketing. What's the? the Not email? really, man. Uh, we I just do send the out, updates. We do yeah. have email. I'm on the list. You are. On the list. Oh yeah. Thanks, man. I He's like the one of the only ones. I that see everyone who consistently. I see everyone who unsubscribes. So shout out to the unsubscribers. <laughs> yeah, shout uh, out, out to me not doing it and getting yeah. called out on the podcast either. That would have been bad. So, some of my friends too. So I see <laughs> motherfuckers out there. Yeah, we could. How did I have no issue with calling people out? Yeah, no, it's literally just a Monday like update of like you know new episode. We haven't really experimented too much with it which, but it would which be i know nice. we should yeah. but yeah. they look nice thank you yeah. Yeah. thank you those. thank you yeah it would be nice it's just it's very hard to differentiate the content and like we have to sit down yeah. and describe it and look there's for sure value in it and it's harder in the moment when you're like oh well like not a lot of people are really reading it and so you get discouraged but i don't think you should like you know we interviewed fab fit fun and the founders of fab fit fun and they started the company from an email newsletter yeah like, that was how they started and they turned that email newsletter into a massive billion dollar company or whatever they are right and so or 100 million whatever it is um but again they did something and they did it right they did it for a long time piada and i talk a lot about just time you know like that's something that you can't control and fight and you can't make more of or it's finite but the longer you do it the chances are you're going to stand out like in and out is a perfect example like there's a lot of burger places that come out every day they're very good but at the end of the day, you always want to go to In-N-Out because they've been there for the yeah. longest time. And we always say, like, even yeah. if nobody, like, shout out to all the listeners and subscribers, but if no one ever, like, listened to us anymore, yeah. we would still do this. Yeah. Because there's so much value in it. Because I love already. listening to our voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that part. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah Pat doesn't. I do. Well, I like listening to my voice. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, no, exactly. Uh, yeah. So like, y you know, don't do it for any other reason but for like for wanting to do it and for yourself and um, you know, if you can make it appealing for other people and, and value, all the more better. But if you're only doing it for others and you're not getting any value out of it yourself, you're gonna probably quit. Yeah. Yeah, I think consistency is key, and I'm much newer at the game than you guys are for sure. Um, hey, dude, but it's you, you have a cooler setup, you have better mics, yeah. and you have a killer <laughs> neon sign on oh, the yeah. wall. Yeah. Shout it. out to the neon sign. But again, sign like, where makers. else can you have a conversation? Like, sure, you could have hit us up, and we could have just randomly sat down and talked. But right. I think that when you do put a microphone in front of you, there's more intent. Of course. And I think that yeah. the one thing that we both have been, I think Pat and I have been intentional about, is being more intentional, right? Like, whether it's you, he was telling me the other day, like. If it's a meeting, I'd rather take a call. If it's a call, I'd rather text. If it's a text, I'd rather not do it. Naval. Right? Yeah. Mm, Naval. So, there you go. Naval. You know, like, you know, shout out to Naval, but yeah. he's fucking up on the podcast. Is he? Is he? Well, he launched one and, and now, then oh, he hasn't posted an episode the for Angel like one, right? two the months Angel or some shit. One? Yeah. This is called Naval, yeah. Where he's doing like five minute whatever. <laughs> and I love yeah, the guy, yeah. but he yeah. just like goes. Oh, he no, just no. Goes so that one, so are you talking about um, the one that he, uh, the it was tweets? like the tweet storm? The one that he went on Joe Rogan and talked about? Maybe. Yeah, I think, I don't think he's updating that one anymore. Yeah. 
I think it was just that. That's it. That was it. But he launched a new one about angel investing. Interesting. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I know. I I thought that too. Hey, for sure, Naval, if you're out there, (laughs) put an episode on the last episode of that old podcast. Hey, guys, got a new one. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Love it. I wish he would keep like keep podcasting and like release every week. He's yeah, great. I, I think Dude in life, dope. I think in life, I think it comes down to being intentional. Like even if that ends up being the wrong decision, if you go in something knowing what you want out of it, at least I think it makes a massive difference. Like with this podcast, like if you're intentional with doing it every week, or you're intentional about the conversations you're having, it just makes it much more fun for you. Yeah, because because you know why you're doing it. If you do something without a reason, you're gonna eventually run into this like wall where you're like, why am I doing this? And then you're going to quit. And that's what happens. Like, whether it's a job and you're like, I don't know why I took this job. And then you quit. You know, I don't know why I'm in this relationship. And then you're like, oh, shit, there's another right person. And then you quit. Ooh. Right? Happens so, all the time. Right. So it's like that why is, and I guess we just annoy the hell out of people just stressing the why all the time. It's a big difference. Like, you know, the other day I was talking to a founder of a company and I was like, why did you guys start this company? And they're like, oh, you know, it was opportunistic. And I was like, I don't know if that's a good reason. And they knew that it wasn't a good reason. <laughs> yeah, and eventually yeah. they're going to run into a wall because they're going to be like, I don't know if the opportunity is there anymore. But if you started with a reason and the opportunity is not there anymore, you're still going to continue because you had a why. Right. You know what I mean? So you're going to be like, okay, there's a wall, but I know there's something behind that wall. So I think that's what it comes down to. Well, that's really what gets you through those tough times. Like if it's purely like I'm guilty of that starting opportunistic businesses, you know, you get to a point where, you know, there is an opportunity, but you you, to level up, it's going to require a lot more funding, managing people, team, that kind of, you know, money, that that kind of stuff. And you just kind of like, well, if your heart's not in it and and you never had a why you're not going to be able to go through that. Yeah, like, are you actually committed to this thing or not? For sure. Yeah, and that happens a lot. I'm guilty of it as well in the past, right? Like, yeah, well, and it's especially when you're you're poor, right? It's like, fuck, gotta do, I gotta just, it's nothing but opportunistic thinking. 100%. But then as you grow and evolve over time as a human, then you get to pick your shots. You don't just have to, like, you know, throw 20 strike combinations hoping one lands. You can pick your shots, bop, 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 and it's, it's just much more intentional. Mm-hmm, yeah, sure. and that, that keeps you committed, too, man, because mm-hmm. when the when the road gets really fucking rough and you think your tires are going to fall off, if you're committed and you got the why, you're just going to keep going yeah. until the road gets smooth, yeah. whereas somebody else might just pull over because they're scared. Exactly. Right, and that's, yeah. where, that's where the whole fear of failure thing comes in. Like, I think if you're committed and you're doing something that you love or at least like have an inter- deep interest in and have a why for then failure is kind of not doing it at all like not you know like that that's the only yeah. failure though there there is no other failure it's it's not committing to it yeah. is the failure yeah not not committing is the failure that's what keeps you from not stopping it right exactly yeah. yeah that's awesome well you guys obviously have a good why for why you guys are doing the podcast mm-hmm. um and, and i don't say this because i've been on the podcast or listened to you guys podcast but that i truly do really love the show i think you guys do a fantastic job of it you. and you are in part to blame for me also having a podcast now hell yeah um and we love so. you're not the only one i was you know it's funny you bring that up a lot of our guests have started podcasts ever since we've done it <laughs> but we like that because we would have wanted that before we started this podcast or before we went to college or while we were in college. Like, yeah. If we heard founders of their own companies talking about other topics or whatever, I think we would have learned a lot more. I, I think that I think that folks, a lot of our folks that listen now are in college or are want to be entrepreneurs or want to be business owners or whatever. They have the opportunity to listen to a shit ton of th- stuff that we've talked about that's super relevant to them. And make it and make it a more informed decision on their careers, and I think we didn't have that. And for us, I think that's why like education obviously is a big thing, and that's what we aim to do is educate others through the stories of these other people, right? Like Pat and I are just like the intermediary of that like information. Yeah, and one thing I actually mm-hmm. thought about going back to your question about like you know the things that I think make a successful podcast is like um, just know going in that you're you should just focus on like the micro audience, like. Every pod, like no matter how many podcasts there are, if everyone in the world had a podcast, they would still have their own audience, like you know that niche, whatever they're serving, and just really focus on that. Don't try to like go after the whole like world in terms of your content, because at that point you're probably spreading yourself thin. Like really try to build through, because because there's so many podcasts, there's so much information readily available. Um, you know, focus on what you're doing differently and who's who cares about that content, and just like 
ride that wave. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got that why figured out. I fucking love it. And so you can listen to The Founder Hour on any of the major yeah. platforms, anywhere, Apple anywhere. Podcasts, yep. Spotify, yep. Uh, Overcast, take Stitcher, your pick. Everything. Stitcher. A lot of our people listen on our website. On the website. Which yeah. is crazy, yeah. Thefounderhour.com. Uh, kind of awesome, though. Founderhour.com. Um, you guys also have an Instagram, which is at thefounderhour. Mm-hmm. Boom, nailed it. Um, Everything's at the Founder Hour. <laughs> Good one. Ever since we interviewed that. you, we went through a rebrand. I think we, we talked about it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think I tweeted you guys. I'm like, shout out to Oh, that's another thing. Great. Website, huge. SEO, huge. Yeah. When it, depending on the, the content. Yeah. Dude, like these days, like, I mean, because like we, we got picked up by like certain press or whatever, that really helps too. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you search like guest interview, guest, like our guest's name, interview or podcast, like we'll usually come up or even just their name. Oh, yeah. Like in the first or second page. And it's great for just branding. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually a great tip. Yeah. A lot of, a lot lot of podcasts don't, don't have websites. Mm-hmm. Do, I don't know do, if you have one, but. Oh, yeah. Do you, you have your own. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah so, uh, I also put all the yeah. uh, episodes up on there yeah. as well. The yeah. one thing I will say that you know I think was unexpected when we started this, um, and I think that we've learned that it has been kind of consistent throughout, was that founders are like the new celebrities, right? Just kind of how chefs became celebrities in the last like decade or so, and like people in that you know food scene. So did founders now. Whether it's been Shark Tank, whether it's all these business related shows, whether Twitter makes these founders much more accessible, Instagram, founders are celebrities. Like people follow founders more than they do an actor or actress these days. And so I think that's something that's helped us out is that people are like, oh my god, you guys had this person on. We love that company or we love that show, whatever, right? And so the fact that they have gained celebrity has helped us. Like because people want to follow them. If we were interviewing, like, a director of, like, finance, no, I mean, they're great. I'm sure they're doing a fantastic job, but they're not celebrities. They're not influencers. And so because founders are more influential, quote-unquote, People want to follow them, so but see for like that, that, that finance podcast mm-hmm. that has that like audience of folks who want to get into finance. Yeah, like, that director of finance might be Great. a better guest for sure than the person who has no like hands in finance yeah. but just started the company. You know? Yeah, so mm-hmm. it really it really depends on again like what the topic like what you're focusing on and and go after like we always talk about it like in in our case, you know we from the get go we tried to go after. Not the founders with the biggest names or the most successes, but people we knew would like, you know, maybe hadn't shared their story enough, but were big enough that they should have been on like every publication, like yeah. kind of like finding those like people and, and, and getting those people on a podcast because we knew that that would grow our audience a lot quicker than, you know, going to the founder of the local coffee shop down the street, even though that's great. Um, we, we wanted to make sure that we were also keeping in mind like the oh, audience, audience building thing because no one wants... I mean, no one wants to create a podcast that no one listens to. Of course. Even though that might happen, and again, like, you you know, you're in it for yourself, like, it's always obviously great when the more more people listen, the more people share, then you can get even bigger guests if you're a guest-based podcast. Um, or we just reach more people. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, any anywhere else? Instagram. Where where else do you want Twitter. to send some people? Twitter We're at the Twitter. Founder Hour on Twitter. Yeah. Personal Twitters, Instagrams, any of those? Uh, <laughs> he's just at Posh. M- motherfucker got at Posh. At Posh. On that is obscene. By the way, I don't know who you had to do favors or what uh, you did, yeah, but that uh, is some uh, bullshit. Shout out to Triple A A A A. It's my girlfriend's cousin. Boom. He owns the Triple A Instagram. Really? So Triple A, the company, does not own Triple A, the Instagram. And so he he's, helps, he's, he's about yeah, to get blown up right yeah, now. Yeah, he helps me. Yeah, he's about to get blown up. He helps. <laughs> he helped me get it. You know. Yeah. Um, free of cost but he does charge other people oh, of course uh, yeah. so Andrew I'll send some business over your way hopefully yeah. through this I got podcast. quoted uh, 10 awesome. grand by at Pat so shout out <laughs> at Pat uh, I'm not gonna pay you 10 grand bro um, but uh, you have a great username you, you, a, great, effort. a great platform that's worked for us and perhaps something that could work for you as well is LinkedIn LinkedIn yeah. to promote every time Pat or I post on our personal platforms we get like thousands of views on that like post. So I, I'm a big, I love LinkedIn personally. I think it's one of the best social platforms, if you want to say that, or professional platforms. I think that it has the most future, honestly. Like less bots, less bots, more <laughs> real people, like people that are actually engaged, people that we want personally in our audience, like of listeners, because they're the ones that are going to enjoy it, consume it, do something with it. Um, but you know, the biggest challenge is growth, obviously, and you know the only way that comes is personal like uh, personal um, referrals of people being like, hey, you know, sh- you should check this out. So we're, we're, we're optimistic that over time, people will start listening to the Founder Hour more and more. And the more people that do, it'll have that network effect and domino effect. And 
it will grow that way. Yeah, well, hopefully this also helps out. If you Thanks. haven't subscribed to the Founder Hour, yes. or this podcast or this for that podcast, matter, yeah. go stop whatever you're doing. If you're, you know, flying down the freeway, just skirt, pull the e-brake. Doesn't even matter. Don't do that. Um, and press the subscribe button, because yeah. honestly, that is the way that, obviously, this podcast sure. and the Founder Hour yeah. knows that people like to listen to it. It costs and, you um, nothing It to literally subscribe costs you zero and dollars. leave a rating and review. That's right. You know, it costs a little bit of time uh, to leave a review, but it goes a long, long way. And I think really that's important does. that podcasters like us support each other and like go on each other's shows and promote each other because as the space grows the people that have been in it for the longest time are going to win yeah i mean it's like any other industry like, the you know, out. yeah if exactly if you've been selling burgers for the past 50 plus years you're gonna win like yeah. it's, it's very it's very it's very natural so yeah that's we're, awesome. we're positive we're optimistic thank you for having us on the show it's been an, an amazing conversation obviously so it's an honor bro. likewise dude yeah. thank you guys so much thank you we're out Woo. Thank you guys for listening to the show. I really do appreciate it. Hey, if you want to help me out, click some of those links in the show notes. Um, if you don't know what the show notes are, if you go to the podcast app and swipe over, you'll see all the show notes. And uh, you can go to ISO 8859, check out some of the clothes I'll be designing and things like that. But uh, moreover, if you do like this, uh, let me know. Give me a shout. Slide into those DMs at Ingersoll, N-I-K, that is at I-N-G-E-R-S-O-L-L-N-I-K on the gram or on TikTok if you'd rather. Um, and yeah, hit me up. Let me know if you liked this episode of the podcast. And if you did, if you could leave a five-star review and rating, that would be dope too. I uh, really do appreciate all of you listening. Uh, means the world to me. And until next time, I'll chat at you then. Peace.